Okay. Uh, right. So again, good morning. And <laughs> this is the third <laughs> meeting of our uh, European and Eurasian Soil Laboratory Network. I will quickly bring you through the agenda of today. We will start with some opening remarks from the chair of Eurozolan, Mr. Giorgi Gambashitta. <laughs> Sorry, very difficult. And the Glossolan chair, Nopone Suvanang. Uh, thereafter, uh, I will uh, give you some updates on uh, the global network. And then we will get also some updates on uh, Eurozolan, no? really from the regional network followed by an open discussion. Uh, under uh, this uh, item, so under item two, we will also look uh, into some activities that the GSP is implementing in the region that are connected to soil. And I will give you a presentation on how to apply for funds at FAO, because there is a special program that you can apply for funds. And this is the right time to apply for funds. <laughs> Under item three, we will uh, look into Eurozolan main needs uh, and uh, we will close by reviewing the position of, of Eurozolan in Glossolan as we do every year in preparation of the uh, Glossolan meeting. And ultimately by uh, looking into the governance of the network because unfortunately the mandate of uh, Georgi and the vice chair of Eurozolan uh, is coming to an end. Uh, so we need uh, to appoint the new chair and vice chair. So without any further delay, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Georgi for his opening remark. Georgi, the floor is yours. So thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, hello, everyone. It's again a pleasure to meet you all online. Of course, it would be better to meet in person, but unfortunately, we are still having lots of problems. You all know this. And uh, anyway, I'm very happy to see you all lots of familiar faces. And uh, again, we had a very nice year, I think, in terms of aerosolan activities. And uh, we did a lot in terms of uh, harmonization, in terms of more uh, collaboration and more exchange of knowledge. And just thanks a lot, a lot to all of you for this. And uh, I think that we have a very nice agenda today, if you agree all and uh, very tight and thanks GSP team for this and uh, I'm looking forward for very fruitful meeting and discussions. Many thanks Georgi. Now I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Nomane Suvanan, the chair of the Lost Run. Nomane, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rukesia. Greeting, very happy to be here. In this, it is my pleasure to deliver this message to the group of the lab manager and also the partner from the Europe Soy region and Eurasia region. I thank the FAO, Mr. Ronald Vargas, the GSP secretary and the team of the uh, secretary team of the uh, FAO to host this third Euros Solan meeting. During the face-to-face -face meeting in our first meeting in uh, Chisunao, Moldova, it is my first time to visit Moldova, the country that hosts up the historic culture, a lot of violet of the event and also the music festival that I still very uh, remember about this experience, not only on our discussion on science, but also the culture and the biggest cave wine factory that we have visited and spent a very nice food join together over there. Thanks to the warm welcome to us at the time from Moldova. And I am truly miss the experience and hospitality from Georgia, who is supposed to host the second Euro Solar meeting in 2020, as we cannot do it as planned because of COVID. However, Despite of the COVID-19, we have taken steps to turn this situation into the opportunity to welcome you more by the virtual meeting. Since the Rosal Land in 2019, start approximately from 76 left in 2018. Now we almost reached 143 left that already registered in the Rosal Land, which is very important number. Thanks to the interest in college and awareness to our important role 
on the sustainable management and commit in fulfilling our responsibility for our countries by support to the mission of the coastal land under the umbrella of the pillar five harmonization of the method, measurements and indicator for the sustainable management and protection of the soil resources. I'm pleased to announce that at this point, the Eurozone land is the expected network that I personally believe that we will be able to join effort with the coastal land for increasing the performance of the coastal land soil lab, as many international systems already exist in your region. The International Organization for the Standardization, ISO, in Switzerland, that providing the common standard among the nation in the creation of the product and service. The Eurola came a network of the organization in Europe having the objective of the establishing a system for the international testability of the chemical measurement and the promotion of the good quality practice. You have many skilled experts that already join collaboration with other regions, for example, the Institute de Research for the Development, IRD from France, and the British Geological Survey in England, BGS, that already have projects to support the Afrique Lab country and also some of the Sunnet country. The long experience with the WePAL from Netherlands for the proficiency test, with all this facility in your region, I think it is not difficult to help us Gosoland member to reach the standard way of working and bringing the quality result together with other experts from other regions, while in the same time being asked to join effort to our European Research Consortium. I'm pleased to announce that in just only four years after the establishment of the Gosoland in 2017, we have come out with a lot of outcome from the network some of them are an important number of the SOP that we can work and harmonize to work in the same way with the good quality control. Many training courses were held in parallel with the regional meeting and now so look free access a web INA under the preparation. With this success, I would like to give honor and appreciation to Georgie Stella Liner Batis. Maja, Arena, Chao, Anek, Nikki, Oga, and all the leaders of the established national network that I could not all mention here for their entire commitment and leadership for the encouragement provided by Eurosolen and FAO. I also expect recognition and sincere appreciation to Ronald Vargas, our secretariat team, for their full support to sustaining our Gosolen activity either the implementation of the PT program, the procurement of some equipment to some country that have a good performance from the PT result and many other. You can visit our website for more information. While the Gosoland and the Eurosoland are working towards the objective of the GSP Pillar 5, there is a need to overnight the harmonization initiative in all soil lab in the country level so that the establishment of the national soil lab is necessary for this purpose. So this year we forgot to have more of our work that scale to this uh, national lab in order to provide the opportunity for local staff to learn and improve way of working. The national network will help to fix the barrier of the language problem and also provide the opportunity for the local labs to present their challenge and need from country level to the consideration of the coastal land. The national land shall establish a country soil data system for ready retrieval and reference for policy planning and as well as for monitoring of the soil health and provision of site specific interventions by concerning on the reliable and comparable soil testing data. And I encourage everyone to actively participate and commit to the goal of us by connecting our soil lab and promoting the harmonized state method to support various decision-making bodies at the international level as a backbone of the site-based soil data to support sustainable management of our soil resources. 
Finally, I would like to express appreciation also to the invaluable logistical support provided by many staff members of the Eurosolen in the contribution to support by providing the information as need and also contribute to our work as leader in the process of harmonization of the SOP and the trainers. Let us look forward together to another successful meeting of Eurosolen today. Please be aware that our success will all depend on your energy, motivation, commitment, and support to the achievement of the goal of Cosolan and Eurosolan. I wish you all a very successful meeting and ensure you of the full support of myself, love as a wise chair and our secretariat team. And I cannot mention here all for our team because I think that we work a lot of the team working together. And I would like to thank also Elena that effort to try to make a harmonization of the uh, organic carbon by walk right back and also the Turin method with the dye combustion method. And now the paper is in under the publication, a uh, reviewer of the publication. I think that uh, we will have a very good publication very soon. Congratulations in advance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nock. Uh, now, before really getting into the, the core of this meeting, I would like to ask you all to please turn on your cameras and give us your best smile. We are going to take the group picture. Filippo, please tell us when you're ready and on. So all cameras on, please. Okay, big, big smile, please. Okay, done. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you. Now allow me to share my screen again and we immediately go into item one. Can you see? Okay. So updates on the Global Soil Laboratory Network. I am starting with a couple of slides to introduce what is Glossolan to the new members of the network. Well, Glossolan was established in 2017 to harmonize soil laboratory methods and data and to build the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis. Ultimately, we work in three main areas. So the first one is quality assurance and quality control. In this regard, we execute the external quality control, also called proficiency testing, and we train the laboratories on the execution of internal quality control. Thereafter, we focus on standard operating procedures. So we harmonize standard operating procedures, not only on, um, on the implementation of methods of analysis, but also on other topics like health and safety. And we also provide the training on the implementation of the SOPs we harmonize. In terms of equipment, we are training laboratories on equipment use, maintenance, and purchasing. And uh, uh, we establish a donation bartering system that, uh, honestly, we still have to put uh, into, into action. <laughs> we are looking for ways to do it. And under these uh, thematic areas of work, we have our a sub-network that is the global initiative on soil spectroscopy that indeed the focus on soil spectroscopy. We have another areas of work. So we have another sub-network of Glossland that focus on fertilizer analysis and that's called the IMPA. So as uh, anticipated, we are now in the Eurozolan meeting. So the meeting of the European and Eurasian Soil Laboratory Network. And this is because Glossolan operates through regional soil laboratory networks. At the national level, we operate through, well, the laboratories that are registered in the network and especially through national reference laboratories that uh, were appointed to take a leading role in the country by the GSP focal point. So basically the official representative of the country to the GSP. No? So it was appointed by the government. The national reference laboratory is uh, his task to establish the National Soil Laboratory Network and to follow up on the implementation of uh, its uh, activities. 
this is an overview of the status of uh, the global network right now. We have uh, more than 740 laboratory registered and 143 of these come from Europe and Eurasia. To have a better overview of our member laboratories, you can consult the interactive map available on our webpage and uh, here with you can see the link. Uh, this is just to inform you that Glossoran is doing its best to keep the web page updated and available in the six UN languages, so English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese. And uh, we are doing the same to, um, to keep also all our publications available in these languages plus others, depending on the availability of uh, translators. Each page contains a frequently asked question and detailed information on how activities are implemented. So I kindly ask you to please consult this uh, these web page to get more information on what we are doing and especially on how we are doing it. Of course, we are happy to answer uh, questions by email, but many questions are already answered in the website. As I told you, um, we are, we are doing our best to translate all the material in, um, in uh, as many languages as possible in order to uh, facilitate the implementation of activities at the national level. In this regard, I would like to, to really thank all of you that, uh, that are serving and served as translators. So this was a voluntary work and, and thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. And uh, as you can see, we already have uh, several material. Well, maybe it, it does not come from this page, but we have several material already available in Russia, Spanish, French, uh, uh, Arabic, and also Chinese. Uh, please let us know if you wish to become a Glossolan translator. Well, this is a job for free, but uh, it, it's, very, it's very useful. And uh, really, it's an opportunity to translate all our material in uh, your local language. So. Um, beyond the six UN official languages and uh, facilitate the implementation of activities in your country. Um, I would also like to thank those of you that are working on the preparation of training videos because uh, we are trying to publish our training material so together with the video training. No? So not only the document itself, but also we are preparing video training. So many thanks to all laboratories that are working on this. Uh, well, looking at Europe, I would like to, to thank the laboratory of uh, Elena in Russia for preparing the video training on Turin. Uh, we are finalizing its editing and it, we should be able to publish it in, uh, on the website on one week, in one week or so. Please let us know if you would like to record any training video. This is a very good opportunity to well advertise your work and your laboratory because at the beginning of each video, there is a space uh, for you to talk and uh, introduce your staff, your laboratory, your country, and, and your work. Um, as you can see here on screen, we have uh, a, a short manual on, uh, on how to record the training videos for the network. So based on the decision made at the fourth Glossolan meeting, which, is, uh, last, which was last year, all resonance meetings uh, will now focus on decision making only. So today there will not be any training because all trainings uh, are and will be implemented in the form of webinars. Again, we are doing our best uh, to overcome language barriers, uh, barriers due to time zones and so, so that we are organizing webinars on the same topic in different languages and at different times to facilitate the participation of as many regions and as countries as possible. Uh, of course, we are not able to, let's say, implement all webinars on the same topic, uh, at the, let's say, in one day or two. Uh, the calendar of the webinars uh, very much depend on the availability of trainers. So in terms of, and also on the language that the that we have available now so that the trainers speak. Uh, we are building a page on capacity building. So the page is still under construction, but the content is updated. What you find on, uh, on this uh, page, well, are webinars uh, organized per topic. So for example, we have uh, webinars on wet chemistry, uh, on uh, spectroscopy, health and safety, and much more. Um, each, uh, under each session, you will find, well, the title of the training, the date, time, and language of the training, 
and the information on the trainers, together with a short abstract on the content, so on the topic of really of the training session. Before the webinar takes place, you will have uh, at the at the at the bottom of the description of the of the session details on the event and the link to register. After the the webinar, you will still have details of the event, uh, a link to download the presentation, and the link. Uh, to download the recording of the webinar so that you can really go through uh, the different training sessions as many times as you want. And eventually we have a highlight that is, as you know, for press and communication purposes. This is just a quick overview of the webinars on wet chemistry that uh, we started to implement. Um, so as you can see, two sessions were already implemented. The last one took place yesterday and it was on health and safety and uh, that was implemented in English. The first one was in Spanish and was on the implementation of Olsen P, of the Olsen P method. And uh, as, as mentioned before, you see like uh, session one was on the implementation of the Olsen P method. It took place uh, in Spanish. We will have uh, the same session in English uh, on the 1st of uh, uh, November. And then we, we will try to do the same in uh, all other languages, depending on the availability of uh, trainers. Uh, on the, in terms of webinars on cell spectroscopy, we are a bit in a more advanced stage. We already implemented five, five training sessions. The next one will be tomorrow on measuring reflectance of undisturbed soil surface in the field under laboratory quality. So please, if you're interested in the topic, uh, attend it. The registration link is still open. And what we are trying to do in spectroscopy, well, is uh, basically to go from uh, the simple to the more complex aspect of, uh, of the matter, because we re there are a lot of laboratories that are interested in soil spectroscopy, but are very new to, to this technology. So we, we are really trying to, to support them in approaching it. So also in this regard, I would like to thank uh, all experts that made themselves available to give and prepare the webinars. We, we really appreciate your work and I'm sure that the region, your region, actually regions in general, depending on the language and countries really appreciate it as well. And uh, I would like to make a call for all of you that feel like uh, becoming trainers. Uh, we are really in need and looking for trainers, not only for webinars, but actually webinars uh, uh, give us a good opportunity to identify trainers to involve in projects. Uh, so eventually uh, there will be the possibility to, to get a contract um, uh, depending on, on the availability of funds and uh, the availability of projects. This is a quick update on the harmonization of uh, the Glossoland standard operating procedure that Glossoland decided to harmonize in the year 2020-2021. Well, last year we decided to add to our work plan the harmonization of methods also on physical and biological parameters. So the list of SOPs we are harmonizing now is quite long. Unfortunately, we had some delays in the harmonization due mostly to the over, overload of work that uh, we as coordinators, but also experts are, are facing because uh, many experts are in multiple working groups. So we are still at the stage of harmonizing the global matrices, uh, but uh, we are positive about the fact that we would be able to publish the SOPs by the end of the year. Um, overall, we face major delays on the preparation of some matrices and harmonization of some SOPs especially. I'm referring, for example, to those on biological parameters because we have few experts in the working group and the little inputs on the procedures implemented for each method were received by laboratories. And this is uh, not because laboratories and experts do not want to share their experience and uh, routine um, procedures, but it's really because the method is uh, it's used uh, by a few laboratories and uh, known by few experts. So uh, maybe later on during the day, we will get back to this, uh, to this issue when uh, discussing that to to harmonize next year. Now, an update on the organization of the global proficiency test. I think you will find this very interesting. So if you remember, in 2019, we launched a, a, a global PT. 
and we involved uh, ultimately 80, 80 to 90 laboratories, although we have 100 sets of spare samples available. So as promised, we did our best to increase the number of uh, soil samples available and thus the, the number of laboratories that can participate to the PT. So this year we have 280 sets of soil samples available and each set contain, contains uh, 10 uh, self-sealed bags of soil labeled with a unique uh, sample code. In each bag, there are 10 grams of uh, homogenized soil material. And uh, well, I don't want to say up to now because this number is uh, like two weeks old, but we received, let's say so far, 250 uh, expressions of interest from laboratories to, um, to participate to the PT. Uh, eight laboratories uh, ultimately said that they will not participate, but that's okay because the problem is that many countries are still facing uh, um, limitations due to COVID, no? which is not very nice. Anyway, uh, laboratories that will participate in the PT will be selected based on geographical balance. So we will ensure to involve at least one laboratory per country. This means that there can be more than one laboratory per country participating in the PT. Then laboratories that will participate will be selected based on the number of parameters that, uh, that can measure. So we provided a list if you, if you receive my email and, uh, and read it, uh, and the methods of analysis uh, that uh, they, they can perform. No? Ultimately, we will apply the principle first come first served, and this principle will be applied, of course, if we if we have more uh, interesting laboratories to participate than number uh, than than samples available. The decision on the laboratories to participate in the PT will be made by the end of October, so very soon you will hear about it, uh, and the shipment of samples will start in November. So participating laboratories will be asked to analyze the samples for soil organic carbon. That is really like our main focus of attention for this PT because of the COP26. Uh, available phosphorus and total nitrogen in this order of priority. If you remember in 2019, we sent uh, to laboratories the three bags of soil and asked them to, re to do replicate the analysis three times per each bag. Now, this will not apply to the PT this year, also because you will receive only 10 grams of soil per each uh, bag. Uh, so there will be no replica. All samples should be analyzed only once. And laboratories are kindly asked not to use all the soil material for conducting one analysis only. In this regard, we are providing recommendations on the amount of soil needed for the analysis, looking at the, the glossolan SOPs, in the instruction for the PT that we will send to you by email and also together with the, with the soil sample, no? it will be in the, in the packet. So as you can see, this is just a, an overview, like an extract from the instructions that you will receive. Here you have the soil parameter and the, uh, the method and an indication of the amount of soil needed to analyze the soil for this method and for this soil parameter. This is again an example of what we ask all laboratories to do before starting the analysis, because we will not send any, let's say, second, second set of samples to laboratories that do not follow the instruction. This, I'm telling you this because it already happened in 2019. So please decide what analysis to conduct a method to use before starting the analysis in order to ensure that you have sufficient soil to do the analysis you want to do. Uh, this is an example of what is good. So, for example, you can analyze the uh, analyze the the sample uh, for for total carbon using Dumas, available phosphorus using Olsen, and again Bray one, and then total nitrogen by Sheldahl. Looking at the amount of soil you would need uh, in total, you would need 10 grams. So this is good. If you decide to also add to the analysis, uh, the analysis of organic carbon by working in black, you will need of 11 gram of soil, and this is not good because you will not have sufficient soil to conduct all analysis. So please uh, uh, plan well and be careful on what you do. This, this year we have a big news. Uh, the GSP 
made an, an investment on the development of a platform, an online platform for the online submission of PT results. Um, I will send you the link, of course, but uh, you can already have a look at it uh, uh, in the Glossolan webpage under quality control and quality assurance. And uh, so how does it work? Basically, by the time I, you are selected for the, for the participation in the PT, you will receive the instruction on how to do the analysis together with instructions on how to submit the results and ultimately how to use the online platform. No? So in this regard, you will receive a unique identification code. It's unique just for your laboratory and it will be that code forever, let's say. Uh, that you will use uh, to enter the, your results uh, in, uh, in the app, in the platform. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to use the chat. I will have a look after the presentation. To conclude my, my presentation, I would like to update you on the Glossolan procurement. Um, so these are again links to the participation of laboratories to the PT 2019 because those laboratories that participated to that PT and are from developing country and demonstrated not to need of training were granting, granted with uh, some laboratory equipment based on their needs. So in Europe and Eurasia, um, Glossoran is uh, providing, eventually still de delivering in some country, um, equipment to uh, Georgia and the Republic of North Mac Macedonia. Information on the equipment provided to, labora to laboratories are available on the Glossolan Equipment Interactive Map that you can uh, see at this link. And if, again, if you want to learn more about the Glossolan program on cell laboratory equipment, you are welcome to visit our webpage. This is just an overview of uh, the equipment we are procuring to laboratories in uh, uh, Macedonia and Georgia. Actually, in both of these countries, the delivery is, uh, is finished. So the laboratory received the equipment already. So as you can see, you have the name of the country, the name of the beneficiary laboratory, why they are receiving the equipment, in this case, because they participated to the PT 2019, and then information on the equipment donated, the donor, and the status of delivery of, of the equipment. So thank you for your attention. And again, I'm available to answer questions in the, in the chat. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Filippo Benedetti for the update on, on the regional network. Filippo, the floor is yours. Yes, thanks, Lucrezia. Thanks a lot. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. Um, just a second. Yes, I hope you can see my presentation now. Well, um, again, welcome to this meeting. Um, as Lucrecia gave an overview on the global uh, activities of, um, of Glossolan, I will try to give a little bit uh, an insight on the regional context. So, um, uh, as you as you know, the the global laboratory network is increasing and enlarging every day, receiving um, more more requests for registering almost every day, and we almost reach uh, the number of 800 laboratories worldwide. And as you can see, uh, Rosalind is one of the biggest regional network because the global network is again like structuring regional networks, and um, Rosalind is one of the biggest regional networks in um, in the world. Um, and originally, uh, as you can see, we almost reached 150 laboratories. And since the establishment of the of the network uh, three years ago, um, since last year, since last meeting of Rosalan, uh, we registered 20, 23 more uh, laboratories in the network. They come from different countries, both from Europe and Eurasia. Um, still, there are some countries that have no lab register in the network. Uh, here is, in, is a list on the left side of the screen, both from Europe and Eurasia. Uh, we are uh, strictly working with the um, Global Soil Partnership focal point of this country to um, asking for their support to uh, nominate a lab to be registered in the network from these countries in, or, in order to implement the activities of Blue Solan in these countries as well and to receive 
experts from this country to share the knowledge, implement activities, uh, and so on from different countries from both Europe and the region. Uh, moreover, there are some countries which did not have the, do, do not have the a National Reference Lab uh, nominated yet. Uh, these are uh, on the right side of the screen, uh, both Europe and Eurasia. Um, what is uh, a National Reference Lab? Is a lab that is, not, that is nominated by the focal point of the country in the Global Soil Partnership, uh, and is the lab that is in charge of leading the establishment of uh, national networks in the country, of implementing the activities of Glossolan in the country, and to also to report to the regional governance, to the, to the, to the regional soil laboratory network chair and vice chair, and the global and the Glossolan chair and vice chair and Glossolan coordinators about all the challenges and the issues facing the country. So we can implement target activities, target project, to support these labs in the country to, to tackle this issue. Um, so as Lucrezia mentioned, the Glossolan is structured in, uh, in regional networks. These are the Resolan, the regional soil laboratory networks, and there is one per region. So we have uh, Latin America, we have Latsolan. Uh, in North America, it's still not established. Then we have in Europe, as you know, Eurozolan. Then we have Nina Lab from Near East and North Africa, Afri Lab from the African countries. Uh, Silnet is the regional network for Asia, and then we have ASPAC in the Pacific. All these regional uh, network meets annually, uh, as you are doing today. The other network uh, did it like in the last weeks, and Nina Lab will do it tomorrow to uh, renew the work plan, share their needs, and discuss about common common project to implement. Still, each region is formed by countries. So the idea now is to Glossolan is to uh, move a little bit forward and downscale more its activities and establish national networks uh, to group together all laboratories operating in the same country to discuss about the common issues about and to try to sub together these issues by applying for project, implementing activities and uh, enlarge the number of laboratories to connect so the network can enlarge as well. Uh, these national soil laboratory networks are also called NASOLAN. And uh, the first task, of course, is to motivate other laboratories to join the network, especially Glossolan, so we can have more laboratories in the network and uh, reach them with our activities. Um, national networks can be a powerful tool to implement all the Glossolan activities and projects in the national level. Because once you have grouped all the laboratories in the, in the country together, they can be easily contacted to be informed about Glossolan trainings, Glossolan SOPs, uh, equipment um, purchasing of opportunities, and so on. Um, and also about, again, advertise about all the events, meetings, trainings, and so on, both at global and regional level. Um, and these meetings, when you meet with your colleagues at, in the national, in the national um, context, uh, of course, the first uh, goal is to share the knowledge, you know? share the knowledge, not only that one that you already have in your lab, but also all the knowledge that you acquire during Glossolan and Resolan meetings, trainings, and other sessions. Moreover, of course, you can discuss about what are the common chain, challenge and needs of the labs within the country in order to find ways to solve this activity, these, these challenges. For instance, by applying for projects together for, um, for implement targeted activities. One activity can be, for instance, the organization of a PT or a proficiency test, or call it interlocutory comparison ring test as you want, but we're talking about a PT, no? So um, a PT can be organized maybe easier in a national level than regional and global level, because you know we have problems with customs sometimes. Uh, even the soil types can be different from country to country, region to region. So it is possible that within the same country, all labs are interested in certain soil parameters in analyzing certain soil types, and so APT can be sometimes easier to, um, to, 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 to develop, to, to, um, to be organized within the country. And a NASOLAN can be a powerful tool to implement this activity. Of course, one big task of the NASOLAN is to actively communicate with the RESOLAN, the governance, and uh, RESOLAN governance and the global governance and the global coordinators in order to share the problems and also uh, it's very important to contact and be very active in communicating with the, your focal, the focal point of your country 
within the global soil partnership you can because he's the he's really the one who can help you to um, implement activities who can support you in um, looking for financial resources um so it's like a, a like a um a theme of cooperation. No? We all, all be to, have to be informed in order to cooperate and find solutions to the problems of the laboratories in the countries. And each uh, national network has a web page that we are um, publishing on the on the Glossal website. Some countries already have their profile, some we are still uh, preparing the, the web page. And in this web page, we report all the information of the national network. And it's important that you. Uh, as countries, when you meet and you have new new activities, new needs, new information about your your country, you let us know so we publish your information online. So we can monitor the activities within the country, and even donors can find uh, easier like to to mobilize resources to certain countries because they, they can be more aware about what is happening within the country in regards of soil laboratory. Uh, this is how the the platform look like. Uh, there is, if you go on Glossman website, there is on the left menu uh, the item uh, National Laboratory Network. There is a, a drop down menu when you can select a country. And um, if the country already informs us about their activity, we create the web page. If some, country, uh, some countries are missing, it's because we are still waiting for information from them. And uh, we will follow up soon in this regard. In the same web page, you find two very important documents. One is the terms of reference for the, of the national network, which can help you in uh, defining and, uh, and know what are the tasks uh, of the national network. And uh, we also have a nice document that is the guideline on how to establish an ASLAN and um, that really, really can, will, can guide you in establishing this network and also contain some nice examples from other countries in the world that face different issues in establishing the national network. So you can kind of, uh, refer to their experience to take all the problems that you may face in establishing your network. Um, there are, we know there are different uh, situations in, in Europe and Eurasia. So we have mainly three cases. One in which the country didn't establish a national network yet. But again, please remember that we are here to help you. Me, Lucrezia, Noak, all the global and the regional governance can help you to uh, establish this network. Uh, the, 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 the reasons can be different, can be that you have low number of laboratories in the country, so it's not, it doesn't really make sense to group them together. But in this case, you can think to uh, connect with the labs from the neighbor countries to create like an international uh, network between like um, countries that are really close together and may have the same needs you may have communication problems so you cannot easily reach these countries you don't have really knowledge on who is operating in the country or you need more financial resources to implement these meetings still <laughs> the covid uh, teaches us that we can have at least this powerful tool of virtual meetings so for instance have the first meeting of the network may be very easy because you can organize it online uh, so it's just a matter of contact all the labs in the read in the country and um, convince them to join this meeting and uh, in order to discuss, to know each other, to discuss about, really about basic needs that you may have. Maybe you all may have um, issues with quality control. So you may decide to organize together an, an external quality control among you, labs in the same country. Then you contact us that may coordinate with the, um, with the GSP focal point of your country to find the financial resources to organize this PT. And this is happening in many countries. I mean, under, we know that under establishment, there are many Nazarene under establishment in many, many countries. Uh, Turkish is, a, is an example. Turkey, just last week, they have the, the, the first meeting. Uh, Hungary is working on that as well. But there are many other examples now. I don't, I don't want to mention all of them because uh, there are many. But uh, many countries in the, in Rosaland are working on this. And uh, please, again, let us know as soon as you have any update, any photograph of the meeting, any information about what you do, so we can share with other countries in the region to uh, serve as an example uh, and, and, and encourage them to establish their network and to publish this information on the Your Country profile on our website. Even those countries uh, which already have established their network, please let us know. Again, keep, up, keep us updated so we can um, 
we can uh, update also your country profile and information on your national on our website. And uh, please always encourage other laboratories that you know are operating in your country, which are not yet member of Glossoland to become a member of the network. Uh, this is because they can then access all the training opportunities that we organize. They can, they can be informed about the standard operating procedures we publish and harmonize and many other activities. So please, uh, we rely on you to share the, the word on, on Glossoland and to inform other laboratories in, in your country, in your region to, to, to become a member of the network. We have many informative material online and uh, again, as Lucrezia mentioned, if you want, we can uh, translate them in your national language. Just let us know, we can work together on that. So this is the end of my presentation. I thank you for your attention. And um, uh, I give the, the, um, the floor uh, wait, back to Lucrezia, but there are also some colleagues, just a second. So now uh, we give the floor to the other colleagues of um, uh, GSP, we have different uh, speakers now. We have um, uh, just a second. I would start with the AGP soil. Philippe. Yeah, okay. So as mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, at, under this item, we will have the opportunity to hear about uh, other initiative programs, projects that are under implementation in uh, the Eurozolan region and that have a link to soil laboratories. So we will start from AGP soil and we give uh, the, the floor to Andreas, I think, uh, no? Andreas, Andreas Baumgarten, AGP soil Austria. Yeah, okay. So Thank thanks you. a lot. Uh, I will try to share my screen with you um, for this presentation. Just a moment. So here we are. Okay, so I hope everybody can see the screen now. Um, so I'm going to uh, make a short presentation of the possibility that we offer in the European Joint Program Soil, which is a very big research project um, with respect to access to infrastructure. Um, so actually, uh, what we what we intend to do is to offer, um, on the one hand, a support for visiting scientists. So this is in, in the task 5.4 and to EGP soil infrastructure, which is, which is in another task. Um, the, uh, the change or, or the difference here is that for the uh, visiting scientist support, uh, you have to be part of the EGP soil consortium because you only get uh, partially um, uh, a reimbursement um, but for the uh, visits of the EGP soil infrastructure, there is also the possibility um, to uh, get support if you are not EGP soil partner. So this is especially, of course, uh, interesting for laboratories uh, that um, are part of Eurosolan or even Glossolan because um, it's not only uh, for visits, for uh, European or Eurasian countries, but also from overseas, for example. Um, the main thing in this context is that uh, the visits or the work that is done uh, during these um, different uh, visits or supports is um, in close link to the EGP soil and the aims of the EGP soil program. So, if you want to apply, but I will come to this later, if you want to apply for this, uh, you uh, are supposed to first read the, the aims of the EGP SOL program because your application has to fit in. Um, so we have it both for researchers and non-research technical staff. And this is of course, very important for uh, our laboratory SOL networks. Um, as I've said before, we have on the one hand, the visiting scientist support, 
um, where we try to, to strengthen the institutional partnership and networks with scientific joint work. Um, and the second thing that is important for us is to facilitate the access on the one hand to agricultural soil research infrastructures and of course laboratories uh, where the analytical work is going on. And what we are aiming at is to uh, support visitors financially uh, to visit these uh, laboratories, for example. Um, they also, we also support samplings. We also support, of course, analysis. Um, and uh, we have now uh, started already um, with the first um, application period for this visiting possibility for laboratories. Uh, and this should uh, include on the one hand knowledge exchange, uh, as well as training and soil analysis, uh, maybe also soil analysis that are not possible at your own home institution. Uh, so for example, if you are trying to adopt some of these new methods or uh, these new SOPs that have been published, uh, you, can, you could check uh, whether you find a, a respective laboratory where these um, uh, analyses are done and so you could apply for a visit there. Of course, again, it has to be um, in line with the aims of the EGP soil. Um, you could also visit long-term experiments, but this is probably not uh, of, of such an importance for, for this group uh, that we have here. And uh, we have an application site. Um, you can have a look under this um, link. And uh, if you click on this link, um, you get first uh, a list of partner countries with long-term experiments, but more important for us, partner countries with laboratories. And there you get on the one hand, a very detailed information about the uh, laboratories, and you get also uh, detailed information about contact persons, uh, all the procedures that are done there, all the analytics that are done there. Uh, we have um, not everything on the website, but we have uh, tables, um, Excel tables that are uh, supplied uh, where you can have all the detailed information listed so that you can really check uh, which laboratories are there and what are they doing. Now, for the application procedure, um, we have twice a year uh, um, application, uh, one in April and one in September. The September, um, unfortunately, has stopped already. Uh, so we have granted uh, several visits. Um, I think in, in some, there are seven. Seven visits have been granted for this period. But we will, st we will start the next um, in April of next year. Uh, so you find all the necessary information and the documents that are needed on our EGPSO website, uh, and you have to supply them about uh, two weeks before the launch of the call. So this is the last possibility. Then uh, the, the calls are open for one month and the application can be uploaded and then they are forwarded to us and we, we check it with the supervising committee and we evaluate the scientific value of the visit, which is important. And as I've said before, the compatibility with each soil aims, aims and scope. Uh, and also uh, relevance of the each soil expected impacts. So there has to be, of course, some connection to each soil because otherwise uh, it would make no sense for the program to, uh, to fund visits if there is no direct connection. Now, what is covered? Uh, we have no limit regarding the duration of the visit. Probably if we are visiting laboratories, it's not so long, uh, some days to one week, but we have a financial limit of 5,000 euro per visit. Uh, so this is uh, the upper limit because we have only a limited amount of money available and to, to, make, the to make it possible for as many people as possible uh, to, to, um, to get access to this granting system, we have limited the, 
uh, uh, the amount of money available per visit to 5,000 euro per visit. So um, if you are a consortium member of EGP Soil, uh, you have some money out of the EGP Soil directly. Uh, and so it's not possible for you uh, to get any reimbursement. So the 100% the reimbursement is only possible for, for external uh, visitors. Um, so uh, we, we cover equipment operation or other special costs for the host institution. Um, these are not covered for the EGP soil members. Uh, so if you are a member of EGP soil, you have to uh, organize these fundings uh, for yourself. Uh, and as I've said before, it's not only for Europeans, it's also for non-European countries. And we have reserved uh, a number of visits only for non-European countries. So for example, in the current um, call, uh, there has been uh, one visitor from, from Argentina, for example, granted uh, to visit uh, an LTE. Now, these are the templates that you can find. I won't go into detail, so you can have a look at it uh, uh, if you visit our website. Um, and of course, we have then to have a, a final report of the visit. So we want to learn what has been going on there and what, what are the results. And of course, we need uh, the, the invoices uh, or tickets or hotel invoices or whatsoever. Uh, so that we can uh, figure out these, the sum that is possible for reimbursement. Um, for, for 2022, we have planned now an extended application that is especially designed for laboratories. Uh, because we've seen uh, that, for example, specific samples or uh, ex especially ring testing, uh, this is a work that well, is, is partially covered by the laboratories, but not all the laboratories are able uh, to, to have the, uh, um, the financial support to do all these things. So we, we are going to offer uh, support if you are interested in analysis of specific samples or the application of new methods in exchange with other laboratories. So this is, of course, uh, of interest for the uh, SOPs that are now published uh, by the FAO. So uh, if you are not familiar with these methods, uh, you uh, can have the possibility to, to get in exchange with other laboratories to compare the methods. And of course, the participation in ring tests, as long as it is in some connection to the EGP soil. Um, so we will have a separate application for these laboratory things. Um, it probably will be very comparable to the current ones and the evaluation process will be also similar. Um, uh, the only thing is we will have to have an individual contract with the respective uh, laboratory. So we are currently setting up the text of this uh, individual contract. And as I've said before, all this will be available for the next call in April, 2022. So um, if you have further questions, you can contact my colleague Katarina Moira from SLU or myself, and I will be happy to ask any questions if you have some. So thanks a lot. Many, many thanks, Andreas. That was uh, very interesting to hear. Um, I would like to open, in this case, I would like to open the floor for questions. So you, again, you participants can either like write questions in the chat or raise their hand. I see a hand up already. Christian, please. Yes, hello, Andreas. And thank you very much for this very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, you know that we are, and I will speak after this about uh, laboratory intercomparisons and that one of our concern is to be sure that the people really work in the same way. Mm -hmm. So, and we would like also to organize trainings uh, to, as you mentioned, uh, increase the skills for some specific analysis. And uh, so I think what you propose is exactly what we need to have a place where the people can be trained mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and discuss together, spend time and so on. So I have a question. Is it because you spoke also about Argentina? So this mm -hmm. means any country in the world, not only Europe. Yeah. Can. Okay. Yeah. So, so the only thing, as I've pointed out before, is that you that we really see the connection to the EGP soil program. So yeah. if the outcome is something where we can say, okay, this is something that fits within EJP soil, then there is no limit to, to visitors whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to think about this probably after that meeting to keep mm -hmm. in touch. And I yeah. think especially with uh, not money who is leading the Glossoland at the moment, and the, the future chair and vice chair and participant of the Orosolan uh, network. Because yeah. I think what you propose is exactly what we would like to find, a place where the people can meet, mm -hmm. take time to work together, take mm -hmm. time to find a consensus on the way to work. And you mentioned ring test, interlaborate comparison, organizing it. And I will speak about this in my presentation. So perhaps we can speak again later. But uh, your presentation was cheering for what we are doing. Thank you very oh, much. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's maybe, really as I've said before, we are just preparing uh, the, um, the call for next year, which is really uh, specifically uh, aimed at laboratories and things like you have mentioned just, uh, uh, but uh, maybe we, we can beforehand, we can get in contact and uh, maybe you, you could tell us what, what are the needs and uh, we can try to figure out how it fits into our program. And so maybe we can have something that is really uh, tailored, I would say, to what we are aiming at. Yeah, we, with pleasure. Yeah. I, okay, uh, we'll not, I don't want to take too much time now because the, the time is short, but okay. probably in the next days we will contact you and ask some practical questions on the way to, to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you okay. very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Christian, for your question. I see that also Georgie would like to ask a question. Please, Georgie. Yeah, thank you, Just I would just to comment shortly about AGP uh, soil project. Uh, so, and say thank you. Uh, to Andreas uh, Baumgarten for his efforts and really um, lots of things before this day, uh, because the uh, uh, whole Austrian team especially uh, was highly interested in getting more in touch with Aerosolan and Glossolan in general. And uh, we were involved on these processes and we were informed about all steps they took by uh, AGP soil project even at uh, very beginning. At very beginning, I was uh, visiting Vienna and uh, they organized a very nice meeting in Vienna uh, at Agis. So I just want to express uh, gratitude uh, by name of Aerosolan and personally <laughs> also uh, for myself for this uh, very good interaction and collaboration. And we were all informed always regarding meetings we were attending. Uh, meetings and sharing also all information with the members and uh, many members who were willing to participate had opportunity to uh, access all data and um, all this information which was just uh, shared by Andrea. So many thanks for this and I think this is great opportunity for Eurosoland and very much uh, the one we are uh, willing to have. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Is there any other question? Anyone else would like to take the floor and maybe just make a reflection? This is your time. Otherwise, we will be following up by email. And definitely, Andrea, let's work together because the connections are many and we can really help each other. If there is no one else that wish to take the floor, maybe we pass to the next uh, presentation that uh, will be given by, uh, I believe, uh, Carolina or Silvia, I don't remember. So Silvia, Michael, I think, is there. Silvia, Silvia. Silvia. <laughs> yeah, Silvia, sorry, my, my mind. <laughs> to talk about the Global Soil Doctor Program, the, Glossolan, the Global Soil Doctor Program. The floor yes. is here. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm speaking today on behalf uh, of uh, Carolina. Hope you can see 
the, the screen. First, I would like to thank the organizers to, for giving me the opportunity to present today the implementation activities of the Global Soil Doctor program and to explain how Aerosolan could uh, collaborate and be an active part of this uh, uh, process. But uh, uh, let me mm, briefly give you an overview of the program. The, um, the Global Soil Doctor is a farmer to farmer training system that aims uh, not only to increase awareness on uh, farmers about uh, sustainable soil practices, but also want to provide the proper tools to, to achieve this goal. Uh, these, these tools include uh, educational material and also a soil testing kit for preliminary assessment of uh, soil conditions, but I will talk about it uh, later on. Uh, one of the strengths of this program is the cooperation between the global soil uh, partnership uh, at the global level and uh, the regional and local institutions and stakeholders. However, uh, the key figure in this program is for sure the soil doctor, which serves as a link between uh, the local promoter and uh, the farmer, also in a long-term perspective, we hope. Then uh, here you can see that I reported one of the results from the questionnaire that uh, has been submitted to identify possible uh, promoters all over the world. And you can see we received the responses from uh, many countries, uh, including Europe, which accounted for nearly 18% of interested promoter. After that, I would like to show you this table that refers to the implementation activities that have already started and those that are about to start. You can see that there are no European region yet, but we are uh, really looking forward to start pilots also in Europe. You may notice that also the topic of the training will be different according to the, um, to the countries, as well as the number of uh, the trainers and the doctors to be trained. This is because uh, this program is um, a very flexible uh, framework uh, that can easily adapt to the country's needs, resources, and also capabilities, of course. Then, uh, yes, we have uh, also developed uh, a series of informative posters uh, related to different uh, soil topics that have been translated uh, into all FAO official languages, but also to very um, local languages like uh, Chichewa and Tubuka for Africa, for example. Yeah, uh, I would like to stress this, um, this thing because uh, uh, the, the posters uh, are going to be maybe the most effective tool for reaching the farmer in their own countries. So we need it to be inclusive as much as possible and also accessible for, uh, for everyone, right? But let's move uh, to the more practical aspects of this program that may involve you more uh, directly. As I mentioned before, we are developing an educational uh, soil kit for a broad qualitative assessment of soil physical, chemical, and biological properties. So to do so, we are including uh, different uh, basic tools and materials for determining the specific uh, soil features. And you will see that some of these uh, features like organic matters and root status can be assessed just uh, visually, so no tools uh, are needed, while others like uh, soil pH and carbonates uh, needs uh, specific reagents. And that's where your collaboration might be very helpful. In fact, uh, it would be great if uh, the laboratories could uh, provide us with some reagents for a specific assessment, like uh, mild acid for carbonates or simply hydrogen peroxide for the determination of organic matter and other more specific reagents like, uh, for, for example, those for pH. Um, bear in mind that in some countries we may use simply baking soda and vinegar just to get a broad evaluation of pH conditions, but it would be better to have proper, um, proper reagents. This is just a visual summary of how we wanted the kit to be to, to look like. 
Um, as you see, there are very basic tools that can be easily used in the field from the farmers, uh, and that uh, these tools are all included into this backpack. Okay, so finally, I would like to show some key points to define other possible aspects of our future collaboration, I hope. Uh, as I mentioned, we as a GSP, we can provide uh, the empty containers to be filled with the specific, uh, specific regions from, uh, from the lab. Moreover, uh, the, laboratory, the laboratories could support uh, the program by carrying on uh, some specific soil analysis uh, that can complement the assessment with the soil kit and get a more informative and valuable and uh, uh, reliable information and evaluation of soil uh, conditions, as uh, you know. We would like also to develop uh, a series of posters uh, related to si soil laboratory analysis, because it, um, even if farmers can access the local laboratories for uh, uh, analysis, it, it's not always clear for them what to analyze, what to look for, and especially how to analyze the, and interpret the results, which I believe is the most important outcomes from, uh, from a soil analysis. Then uh, we would like also to your cooperation regarding the development of indicators uh, on crop requirements uh, and also to identify some plants deficiency symptoms. And of course, all other suggestions from your side that can improve the program are more than, uh, more than welcome. I would like just to, to thank you for uh, your interest. And if you have any um, questions, suggestions, comments, you can write it in the chat or contact me by email at this uh, email address. So thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Silvia, for your presentation. Again, please, if you have any question, you can raise your hand or uh, write it in the chat and we will answer. Otherwise, we move to the next presentation. Unfortunately, Yusuf, that is, uh, well, I, I think you all know Yusuf, is <laughs> our uh, GSP data management and mapping expert. And actually, I had to open the discussion on the possibility to link uh, INSI with Glossolan. So basically to talk about data quality in um, mapping processes and uh, data management. Um, Filippo, do we have the slides of uh, Yusuf? No, he didn't forward us yet. I'm trying to contact him, but he's not answering. So maybe we can move forward and then come back to him if he's coming. Otherwise, maybe I can, without slides, um, I can just, okay. And uh, I think that uh, Maria Santape is with us. Right, Maria, so maybe you can also help us. And maybe many, many other members of the EC are here. Yes, here. yes, yes Maria. <laughs> yes, but I didn't prefer nothing. No, so. without <laughs> preparation. Basically, just intro. Um, the idea was that of uh, basically explaining everybody how maps are prepared now. So basically the role of EC and how uh, national maps are prepared and then compiled. No? So basically, uh, INSEE has the mandate to prepare the maps. So these institutes have the mandate to prepare the maps and then linking to that, uh, uh, making the connection with laboratories, no? like seeing ways to, to, to link the two. So if you want to say a few words on how <laughs> Otherwise, I do it as you, as you prefer. Well, I, I can just say by my experience what we have done for Italy and so also what we are doing in EGPSOL, which is something that is uh, somehow linked. Uh, also, I had a presentation some days ago during the European Soil uh, Observatory um, Stakeholder Meeting. Uh, I made reference to FAO and Pillar 4 and Pillar 5 activities, so may I can just speak about this. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the main point, which is essential and is for me a uh, best practice, is the approach, which is a country-driven approach for the mapping of uh, global soil partnership. Uh, so the, the countries itself organize and the national focal point uh, uh, nominate some expert depending on the map that uh, is going to be produced. 
Uh, so this expert is uh, leading, I mean, the group in the country who is organizing the practical activity of collecting data and then uh, performing the uh, mapping. Uh, and so, but what is uh, common are the methods. So uh, cookbooks are produced for methods uh, to be followed to map so that these maps are not uh, um, different. I mean, they, they, they have a, a common method, so, so to have a, a kind of a standardization. Uh, but uh, in this moment, what is maybe uh, the problem that we would like also to face in AJP soil is that the basic data um, are not harmonized. Uh, so you can have different uh, analysis, analytical method that uh, as, a, as a product that, that there can be some transboundary problems be between countries. Uh, and so uh, what we were, we would like to do and we are starting to, to, to do in AGP soil is also some harmonization um, activity between different uh, methods apply, applied in the countries. So to have some, in the basic data, some uh, um, tra um, transformation functions between uh, methods. That I see that you also are willing to do, so it's interesting this. Uh, so to not to do the job after the mapping, because you can any any way do the job after, but it would be better to have this before on the basic data. So to have the, the maps already harmonized in between countries. So uh, I, I don't know if this can be useful for you, but I think that two, the two pillars are very linked. The, the activity of the, um, you, you are doing of harmonization and standardization is very linked to the, the mapping. Uh, in this sense, so to have some uh, uh, harmonized products in the countries, between countries. Grazie, Maria. Uh, and uh, we found the presentation of Yusuf. <laughs> that uh, basically, uh, well, it's just connected to all you said. Filippo, maybe can you put it on screen? Because I don't see it on the drive yet. So Yusuf prepared a few slides in which we basically uh, introduced the INSEE, so this international network of, of soil information institutions uh, that indeed has, the, indeed has the mandate to um, prepare the maps and also discuss the preparation of the maps. Uh, each country has a representative in INSEE and, uh, and basically they have to, to find the data and prepare the maps. Um, the challenges that you that Maria just mentioned are also the one reported on, on these slides. So there are problems of insufficient data, uh, fresh data, meaning new data. Many times maps are prepared using old data. Uh, data often are also not harmonized uh, between countries. So they are reported in different units of measure, obtained using different methods and so on. And also there are uncertainty related to the quality of the data. Indeed, one of the wishes that, uh, that Yusuf told me that also Glossana would like to, to see reflected in the maps is that of adding information on the ins um, uh, inserti I think it's called, of, uh, of the data in the maps. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, this presentation also uh, reports some uh, uh, proposals on how, in this case, INSI can uh, support the Glossolam. So INSI can support the Glossolam by developing the infrastructure for storing, serving, and exchanging soil lab information and the spectral services. And this can be done through GLOSIS, so through the Global Soil Information System. Then uh, they can also help us by implementing the harmonization of laboratory data using results uh, of uh, Glossolam. So basically, I honestly, I didn't understand much this second point, but I think that uh, they just refer to the fact that they would use our um, harmonized SOP, for example, or promote the use of, of the harmonized SOPs. And then they can, again, they can help us on capacity building, on data processing, uh, storing, mapping, and modeling. Uh, next slide. On the other side, Glossolam can support ESC by uh, providing track measure data 
uh, testing the quality of the data, so implementing activities on quality assurance and quality control, and ultimately harmonizing data. Next slide. So this is a proposal on how we can work together. Maybe we can have a joint working group. Uh, and uh, in terms of connecting Glossolan and INSEE at all levels, the proposal would be that uh, of uh, sharing uh, Glossolan and INSEE information with the two networks. Uh, so looking at, uh, at our network, so Glossolan, maybe I can send to each of you information on your representative in INSEE. So the institution uh, that uh, is responsible for preparing the map of your countries, and then we can use a country approach. So uh, we, we follow up and help uh, overcoming uh, obstacles in the potential collaborations, uh, looking at each country situation. This was the last slide, right? Yeah, so I don't know what you think about it. For me, like sharing contact information would be the first uh, first step. So I send you, I will send you uh, information of your on your INC uh, representative, and maybe I will inform your INC representative on um, on you. <laughs> so basically, on all the laboratories that are registering Glossolan from uh, from a specific countries. Um, I see that uh, Ms. Vinci would like to, to talk. Um, Ms. Vinci, yes, please. Yes, hello. Do you hear me? Yes, good morning. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm um, a colleague of Maria Fantapia. I, I, we don't work in the same institution, but uh, I work in a regional uh, uh, soil service that works in an environmental protection agency in the Veneto region in Italy. Um, we are connected with the Maria and other colleagues uh, uh, working on a soil monitoring uh, project and hypothesis for, it for Italy. Since in Italy we don't have a national institution, um, all the work done on soil is uh, done in, within the regions. And so we don't have a, one national laboratory. We have many uh, regional laboratories, but these are connected um, into a society, we call it uh, SILPA, that is a society of uh, uh, soil uh, laboratory that are not only public, also private, working uh, in um, many regions in Italy, um, that work uh, for soil science, also for uh, agriculture for farms. Um, we just had um, um, a reunion, um, a meeting uh, last uh, week uh, in Italy, and um, uh, some of these laboratories were present. And um, we are performing um, there are already many years that uh, this uh, society performs a ring test, a national ring test. And many of these laboratories participate also to uh, international ring tests, uh, like the one of the uh, Wageningen uh, uh, University, um, the VEPAL, called VEPAL. Um, now we are testing uh, some new uh, methodologies for assessing soil organic carbon since uh, the um, workly black method uh, is um, going to be uh, dismissed uh, because of environmental problems. But we, um, we, are, uh, we know that this could be difficult in other countries that do not have so many um, possibilities to chances to buy very expensive uh, um, instrumentation, but uh, uh, in Italy, the, um, we have seen that many laboratories have bought uh, these uh, new instruments that uh, are uh, that with, temp with different temperature uh, allow to assess uh, organic carbon uh, in a in inorganic carbon together um, in an easier way and a safer way for the environment and also for the um, laboratory personnel. So. Um, yeah, oh, the, the only thing I wanted to this to say was this. Uh, so, to <laughs> to um, 
to uh, let you know uh, the experience in Italy and uh, and the reason why uh, we don't have a national laboratory yet. Thanks, so, okay. thanks, Helena, for sharing this uh, this this like the context in Italy. We will contact in order to even if there is not a national lab to to collaborate with the national network that it was already established so we can yeah. join the efforts even regarding the the standard operating procedure you are using maybe we can even try to translate those that close run already harmonize in italian so labs can use this and this is the procedure we, we use is a, a german a dean um, procedure and i think it's a, it's going to be a european standard so uh, uh, this is quite known in uh, many countries in Europe. I mean, I don't know worldwide. But, uh, and um, so uh, our laboratory has uh, subscribed the list of Glowisilon laboratories. So we are, um, but I don't know how many other laboratories. I think I saw four Italian laboratories were subscribed, were uh, in the list. So. I don't know which are the others. It's possible to have a list of the laboratories. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will. Online. I will. I will send you an email after the meeting so we okay. can follow up on Be this. Because it's not available on in the net, uh, is it so? Yeah, there is a. The, we have the map on the Grosland website where all the labs oh. are reported. But okay. uh, I will. I will share with you. Maybe we can have. A, I will write you an email so we can maybe you can have a meeting with all the Italian labs in Grosland. Okay. And this also I call for all the countries if you want to have more information on the labs. From your country registering the network, please let us know so we can uh, update you so you can communicate with them. I okay. see George also is as an end up. I don't know if it's if yes, for now. I would, thank you. I would just to comment uh, very shortly regarding this uh, um, idea to have some interactions between uh, Glossolan and NC uh, network. So this is very important for in my case, so for example, in Georgia, uh, this is advantage that. Uh, I'm also representing INSEE, so our institution, so this is uh, sometimes good uh, that there's no extra people to communicate with, but um, also in other terms, it's of course lots of responsibilities and lots of things to be done. But uh, even in our case then, so we are uh, the institution who is uh, creating data, so analyzing data and also uh, making maps. So even in our case, it was necessary to even to reorganize data, how they are stored and arranged because uh, to have it ready for mapping, uh, sometimes laboratory may not have it in the way that it can be directly used for uh, mapping activities. So there can be missing data like uh, georeference uh, data, so coordinates and some other uh, necessary things. Even sometimes method may not be indicated and then it's difficult to understand how comparable those data are even inside the country and the region so uh, in that terms i think this communication and some working group uh, may be very very useful so thank you just yeah indeed i also think we should establish a working group and glossolan eventually should have a say on uh, on the data used for the maps no also in terms of recommended methods that uh, well, we should propose <laughs> the data owner to, to use. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions or uh, interventions, I would move to uh, the last presentation of this item that I hope you will find interesting because it talks about the financial resource mobilization. So usually if attractive, let me share my screen. Okay, this is just to provide you some background on uh, uh, the financial resources available to Glossolan. So as you know, Glossolan is an initiative of the Global Soil Partnership. Uh, and as such, uh, it works as the Global Soil Partnership, meaning that it's a self-finance initiative. We don't receive any financial support from FAO. So all the budget we have allocated for the implementation of Glossolan refers to projects granted to the Global Soil Partnership. And in this regard, most of, of the budget is allocated to the implementation of global activities. At the national and regional level, we have very, very few projects 
that result from the type of project that I will tell you uh, about now. So linking to this, uh, uh, I would like to ask all Glossolan members to please make an effort to mobilize financial resources for the implementation of activities in your country and region. Of course, we will help, but please do not uh, wait for us to do all the work, okay? We should work together. And in this regard, uh, the Glossolan coordinator, in this case me, but also your regional soil partnership coordinator can help you in preparing the concept notes and submit them to donors. But let's look at the donor uh, in particular, so FAO. So how to approach FAO as a donor? So approaching FAO as a donor does not mean to submit concept notes or request for financial support to the Global Soil Partnership, because as I just told you, the GSP is not a donor. However, uh, laboratories and uh, governments, countries, and so can approach FAO as a donor uh, by asking for technical cooperation program projects. So these are called TCP projects. Um, I myself follow up on the preparation of this type of projects for um, soil laboratory activities. And usually in these projects, we, we put the soil laboratories together with mapping activities. We, we work together. Um, so this is just to report to example of TCP that were granted in the last years. At present, we have a regional TCP for the Near East and North Africa that started in October 2020, and we have $400,000 budget to provide trainings in 12 countries in the region. So it's quite uh, uh, good. Again, we have a national TCP in Liberia. In this case, the budget is a bit higher because it also deals with procurement of laboratory equipment. So we are procuring equipment and we are providing training. And at the same time, as I told you, we also do mapping activities and work on the establishment of the national soil information system. So this is just to tell you that getting these funds for soil laboratory activities is very possible. So please keep it into consideration and, uh, and let's work on it together because the time to ask for this type of project is now. Uh, how to apply for a TCP project? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you need to have a clear idea of what you want in terms of activities and the final objective of your work, no? So if you like and if you need, uh, myself, uh, but also other experts in the, in the team, in the Glossolan team can help you in formulating your, your proposal. And once you have uh, uh, the activities and objective clear in mind, uh, you should uh, liaise with your government for the preparation of an official letter requesting for a TCP project to submit to the FAO office, either your country FAO office, if you have one. Well, this is not really the case of Europe because uh, uh, FAO offices are not really present in Europe at the national level. Or if you want to apply for a regional TCP, which means like a project that involves more countries, uh, you should address uh, your request to the regional FAO office uh, in, uh, in your region. Indeed. So the letter should mention the problem, challenge faced by your country, then the, the request for a TCP project with a note on how the TCP will help to tackle the problem challenge. And uh, in this case, I would uh, kindly ask you to please put me and your regional soil partnership coordinator in copy so that uh, we can follow up internally with FAO on, on the submission of your request. So once that your request is uh, received by, by the FAO office, we can start preparing the project document. Again, this is something you cannot do by yourself because there is a template to use and some parts of uh, this template, uh, well, basically can be completed only by FAO, FAO staff. So again, uh, um, I can help you on this, uh, your regional soil partnership coordinator can help you. And uh, uh, in this case, we will also work uh, with the TCP office officer at the FAO office you submitted your request. So by working all together, we will get to finally have a project document that we can submit to the FAO office. And then we wait for, for approval and eventually we start the implementation of the project.
Now, I told you that this is the time to ask for this type of project because these projects are assigned every two years. And right now we are at the end of the biennium. So if uh, you want to get any project in the coming year, we should apply for it now. So in this regard, there are specific deadlines to, to follow. So also when uh, you, you send uh, or the representative of your government or your national focal point send a request for a TCP project, um, they should also ask for deadlines in relation to the writing of project proposal. Also, or if you put me in copy, uh, for example, I will follow up on, on this. These projects provide a maximum of $500,000. You cannot ask or get more than this amount of, of funds. However, um, the activities that we can include in this type of proposal uh, can, um, can be gradual, no? So maybe we get a, a first project now and kick off activities. Meanwhile, assess needs and also include as one of the activities in the project proposal, the writing of a second phase project proposal. So that after uh, the, fini the, the, the end of so the TCP project we are getting now, we can apply for another one and complete the implementation of the activities we have in mind. Um, on average, this project lasts one, one and a half years. So if we started the uh, next year, so in 2022, uh, it would end in, uh, like in July uh, or August 2023. So I will make this presentation available online so you can download it and think about it. The most important things to do now, if I trigger your interest, is really to think about anything you need, eventually connected also to, for example, mapping activities, establishment of national sort of information systems, or, you know, like broader it a bit. Um, think uh, uh, at your country, so maybe you can work on this together with other laboratories in your country and uh, ask your government to submit uh, the official letter requesting for a TCP. This is critical. Without letter, you cannot get the project. I don't know if there is any question. This was the end of my presentation. If you also write it in the chat, I will answer uh, any question you might have on TCP project. If not, <laughs> I will pass the floor to, uh, let me see who is next in the agenda. Uh, Filippo, over to you for the Rosal and main needs. Yes, thanks Lucrezia. I think there are some comments in the chat, so maybe in the meanwhile you can have a look at I, them. I will answer, so we, okay. we don't get late on the agenda. Good, um, I will briefly talk now about the Rosal and main need. Uh, these needs are all the, all the data that I will report now are the outcomes of a survey that has been launched in the last weeks before the um, before this meeting, and to get some knowledge about what are the main needs and challenges of the network, and to to get these data together and to present them now to uh, let's say to use them as a base to discuss then about the what are the needs of the of the network and to establish a work plan. Uh, the uh, survey was uh, completed by um, all these countries in, in, the, in, the, in the upper part of the screen, 13 countries answered. And I want to thank you once again for your, the submission of the data. Um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, again, like what, you, what is the, um, I want to briefly go through the who answered this questionnaire. So basically, mainly, mainly we have uh, governmental data, governmental labs and uh, public uh, labs from the research institute as well, um, and mainly from university, still 20% uh, are from the private sector. Then we have, uh, with the first question we asked was uh, uh, if labs were involved or at least informed about all the activities happening in the global and the regional level, and most of them say yes, um, few of them say no, so, this means that there is a little bit of uh, little necessity to improve the communication within the regional network. And moreover, uh, most of the people state that to not be to not have a direct communication with the resolute governance 
Uh, again, this means that um, the communication within between the the Rosalind chair and vice chair and the members in the network should be strengthened. And we will discuss this also in the last item of the of the of this meeting during the uh, governance when we we'll talk about the governance of the region. Uh, we were wondering if laboratories participated in the previous Eurosolan meetings. So this is the third one. We have already two in 2019 and 2020. And most of you didn't. Uh, most of the of the labs, at least, that answered the survey didn't uh, attend previous uh, Rosalind meetings. This also can be because uh, you are new in the network. So maybe you, didn't, uh, you were not part of the network when these meetings took place. But all of those labs that attend the Rosalind meetings stated that it was a really useful experience for different reasons, because, yeah, of course, it's a way to share the knowledge, uh, to give some trainings. As Lucrezia mentioned in the previous years, we also got training session during the meeting, while this year we kind of divided the session. We have a Rosalind meeting just to take decisions and then uh, training me sessions in, a, in different days and uh, on different topics. Uh, it's a good way to networking between colleagues from, this, from different countries and I like common challenges. And uh, it's a good way, of course, to, to inform and be informed about the Rosalind activities and to implement these activities within the region and the countries. Uh, I'm presenting this not because not just to 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 not to share to this this data, but really to to inform why it's important to to organize this meeting because also we want to improve. And now we we know that uh, let's say most of the people appreciate this uh, this this nice objective of the meeting. So we would like to uh, improve the next meeting according to the needs of the region. Uh, we were always also were wondering if labs uh, join already a PT uh, in the region, and most of the labs in the region actually already join a proficiency test uh, in different contexts. Can be organized by the one organized by Glusola in 2019, uh, and as Lucrezia mentioned, there is another one uh, taking place in 2021. Uh, she should uh, you should have received an email about that. Um, so we are uh, collecting uh, submissions for labs who want to join the Global PT of 2021. Um, other organizer can be both national and international level. We briefly also investigated what are the main needs of the of the region um, in order to implement and, and targeted work plan both at global and regional level which may face, uh, may, may face this topic to help laboratories to, to solve this, the, these challenges that they are having now. So one of the main needs of the region is the adoption of more modern methods. And we have an example of soil spectroscopy. And as you know, Glossoline is organizing a different training session on this topic. Uh, tomorrow will be the last uh, session for the first slot of webinars on soil spectroscopy. Uh, other session will be organized in the beginning of 2022. All information are available on the website, by the way. Another great uh, need, main need of the region is the harmonization of SOPs. Um, and as you know, this is one of the main activities of Glossolan. And many of you, many of the people in the region uh, are working on, on this. Almost in all working groups of the SOPs that Glossolan is currently harmonizing, there, there is uh, a representative from Europe or Eurasia. So there is a, let's say, great participation in the SOP harmonization already in, uh, from the region. And other needs regards internal and external quality control uh, and training, training on different topics. For this reason, we were wondering also what are the main topics for training that are mostly needed in the region. And these regard mostly uh, SOPs again. And, and we will try to implement um training session on the standard operating procedures um both on dry and wet chemistry um and again if some of you feel like to support as trainer for certain procedures please let us know there are already some trainers from the region who are helping us in organizing trainings uh for instance uh maya from croatia will support us in um, in the training session on electrical conductivity that will take place in a few weeks. But if anyone else would like to support us with this, more than welcome. Just write us an email so we can uh, organize training session. Uh, also on the other topics that are mostly needed in the region. 
So internal quality control and, uh, and equipment maintenance. Um, last part of the survey regard the, the support that labs are receiving from the regional governments, because this is of course related on with uh, financial resource mobilization as Lucrezia just mentioned. And so first we were wondering if um, labs talk that uh, governments both at national and at regional scales were aware about the key role of soil laboratories in producing good soil data. And we know that this good soil data, good quality data um, are needed to produce map and then to make decisions at both national and regional level. And um, the outcome of this, of this question was that, okay, we should, Glossona should work on, inform more the government about this, this the, of, the, of the work done by laboratories. We already produced some informative material that can be used to inform governments and we are working and we work to produce more. Uh, moreover, we were also were wondering what is the kind of relation between uh, labs and uh, national and regional governments. And most of labs that answered the survey didn't have any, do not have any interaction with the government, while some others receive a different type of support can be uh, technical, economical, or political support. Um, but again, we think that inform more the, the, the governments about the role of labs may facilitate the allocation of financial resources for soil laboratories and development of policies to facilitate, facilitate your work in the lab. And uh, another main outcome of the survey is that uh, most uh, of labs that answer the survey think that Eurozolan may facilitate the role uh, of communicating between uh, the laboratories and the governments of the countries to inform them about your needs, the, your work, your role in, um, in producing this data on soil parameters. And, and this of course can even facilitate the mobilizing of financial resources for labs. So I thank you for your attention. This was just a very quick presentation to introduce you to this big topic of the regional need. Um, I will now give the floor, uh, I think to Christian, uh, unless you guys want to take the floor. Um, because um, Christian Hartmann is a Glossan advisor from IRD France and um, is always helping Glossan in organizing PTs. And uh, he will give you a short uh, presentation on this topic. So Christian, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. So I will open my presentation. Uh, here it is. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Do you have it in full screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a short presentation about uh, the possibility to organizing an interlaboratory proficiency testing, interlaboratory reason of proficiency testing that has also been called, I think, ring test previously because you have seen that uh, the Glossolan is providing many documents, SOPs and video explaining how to use the VSOP, SOPs, recommendation, etc., to have the laboratories working in the same way worldwide and being able to provide results. But how can we know, how can you be sure to perform correctly according to the recommendations that have been made and also in a comparable way. And this is a key issue because I think in Europe, many labs have already high quality, but the question now is, are the results comparable and how much is the comparability? So to have this information, it's important for the labs to participate to interlaboratory comparison for themselves to check the performances and also to assess the comparability compared to the other uh, laboratories, other participants, not only in the region, but also worldwide. So in the past, they have been already, already two regions that have organized interlaboratory comparison that was uh, Asia and Latin America. 
we have already had a discussion with this region to say that it's important not only to have one comparison, but to organize it on a regular basis. Because the performances you have one day, we are not sure to have the same after. So you need to train on a regular basis and check the performance on a regular basis. So the objective of the discussion now is to see how we could organize a first interlaboratory comparison in Europe and also to discuss about the way it will be possible to do it on a regular basis to have different comparison in the future. To do this, we need uh, what is called PT providers. Is in fact laboratories able to prepare the soil samples in a way it can be used for such comparison, interlaboratory comparison. So the need that Glossoline has is to find not only motivated labs, but also skilled labs, labs able to prepare the sample in that specific way. Organizing this interlaboratory comparison has a very limited cost compared to the, the budget we have seen in the different presentation. But perhaps you need some specific instrument that also very cheap, in fact. And in, also every lab can learn how to be a PT provider. Anyway, every lab should prepare samples in the way to have an internal quality control. So in the, all the documents that the Glossoline has already produced and delivered, there is a, a guide, a basic guidelines for preparing the samples for internal quality control. So as we would like to have a discussion on which laboratories, laboratory, laboratories could be PT provider, I will just remind quickly what has been presented in, in that guideline. These are the different subjects in the guideline. So we'll just have a quick look. So the first step is the sample preparation. When you need to collect soil, diversified type of soil, of course, to be able to test the laboratories in the range of uh, results they have to produce, drying, disaggregation, and miling, sieving, etc. This is the first step. And at the, at the end of the first step, you should get results, soil samples that are just like presented here and have uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 kilos. The, in the sample process, there is also, the, after the sample pr preparation, there is also the homogenization. You see, this is the tool that the British Geological Survey is using. And this is how the samples that we have, uh, the, the PT that we mentioned about the carbon content has been prepared. You see something very simple that many labs could prepare by themselves. And also you need to subdividing this big amount of soil that you have with that uh, specific uh, device that is made only of steel sheets and that is also very easy to buy, very cheap to buy or easy to prepare. So you have a big amount of subsamples that should also be homogeneous. Of course, this homogeneity has to be tested. So you can analyze a, a sample, a certain amount of, of these small subsamples for one parameter and to statistically analyze the result to see if you have the homogeneity you are expecting or if you have to improve the preparation. After this, there is a step of packaging and, and labeling. This can do, be done by hand or with some specific machines. We know that in, in Europe, generally, the cost, labor cost is quite high. So it's easier to do it with a machine of cheaper, not easier, but cheaper to do it with a machine, but it can also be prepared by hand. And there is an aspect of labeling that has to be discussed with uh, FAO for each uh, type of, uh, of interlaboratory comparison and network. The, the labels will be a little bit different, but there will be recommendations. And also as the this has to be prepared in advance to organize the intercomparison. The laboratory, the volunteer laboratories have to think about the storage and of course also about the confidentiality 
the samples that will be used, of course, everything must remain confidential for, for these samples. And so as we need to organize a first interlaboratory uh, comparison inside Europe, we need PT providers, sole providers, and we would like to launch a discussion to know which laboratory are volunteer to do the job. And I think this is especially important because as we have seen, 40% of the lab have not yet participated to such interlaboratory comparison, but 60% have done it, know very well how the system works and could become volunteer PT providers. So thank you for your attention and let's see uh, which laboratory would be interested to, to work as a PT provider. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, Christian, for this presentation. I think the, you launched very good inputs. So let's see if someone wants to uh, take the floor on this to add something or uh, on this uh, PT organization in Europe, Eurasia. Uh, so if you have any inputs or want to share your point of view, please uh, use the chat or raise your hand and we can give you the floor. And the, the presentation that Andrea made was very inspiring for different things because uh, becoming a, a PT provider, even this, we could organize a training among the different labs that are interested. Because this, this interlaboratory comparison have to be done. It's the only way to prove that the labs are, are working in, in a good way and also to see the comparability. We have spoken about uh, INSEE and the, the data that I use for a map, we need also to know what is the uncertainty associated with analytical work, not only with the computer processing of uh, providing the maps, but also what are the uncertainty related to analytical, uh, analytical work. And we have heard about Italy that is using uh, setting up uh, national network and buying the samples uh, to WEPAL, if I remember correctly. But this is something that could be produced. Anyway, all the labs should have uh, internal quality control. And I have seen that some labs would be would like to be trained for internal quality control. The first thing is you need to have your testing samples. So this is the first step that I think a training about this is absolutely necessary for all the labs, even if all the labs do not want to be involved in that big work of homogenization, preparing 20 kilos of samples or lapeling packaging or something like this. But even if the samples are provided and sent to, uh, as we did to the British Geological Survey that will make the work, it's okay. But it's good that the skills are transferred and that there is a capacity building all around the region. You have seen how big is the Eurosolan. It's all West Europe and going to Eurasia. So there are so many different soil types. It's extremely important that uh, Glossolan can get soils, such diversified soils, and be able to analyze it uh, on a large scales. Yes, indeed. Like, and let me remember that we have Glossolan uh, published some documents on both preparation for, um, preparation both sample for internal quality control and proficiency tests. All these guidelines are on the web, Glossolan website. Maybe I will put now the link to this document in the chat so you can uh, have a look and, and know how to prepare your um, reference samples for internal quality control. And as Christian mentioned, and as we saw from the survey outcomes, I think it's very important to organize uh, trainings on internal and external quality control. And we will try to implement this by the end of the year or, or at least by uh, the beginning of 2022. So we will inform you as soon as we organize these trainings. And if someone feels like to help us in giving the training, please let us know. We can do it in different languages, in the language that you prefer. And so let us know, please. And I see in the chat that Joao, I mentioned that uh, he, um, he still have some samples from last that this, the, uh, the PT that was supposed to be held last year, but due to COVID was uh, canceled. So also that one patient can be 
we can start from from this input maybe yeah yeah, yeah. this is why unfortunately covid of course has stopped so many activities and for the glossal and we started to work with joao and, and thank you very much to him good to see him first and thank you to him for all all the discussions we had to prepare these cells and finally we have not been able to to use them and this situation show how important it is to make uh, a capacity building uh, a, a skills transfer to different regions that we are able to face any any difficulties of transportation people not being able to go and lab in in the work and in the lab and so on so it's very important uh, to to set up something very quickly there's also a question from you, Christian. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just saw a question from Maria. And yes, Wepal is an excellent PT provider, and we are working with them. So I am even surprised not to see Winnie today, but perhaps she's very busy because she has joined all our meetings until now. And they are excellent. We are working with them. But as I mentioned, it's a uh, a capacity building that we would like a knowledge transfer because if we want to organize something with glossolan we're discussing here with europe but the idea is also to have pt provider for all the world and you see the amount of soil is so important the preparation it has to be done on a volunteer basis we cannot rely only even if uh, wepal is coming from wageningen university and the cost is kept as low as possible. The idea between Glossolan is to have collaboration, helping each other. And so we need to reduce the cost. If we want to make uh, uh, three rounds every year with four samples, you see this, and, and uh, I don't remember if Lucrecia mentioned the number of samples that we have prepared, this number of sets, they are 300 sets that will be prepared. But we have already 700 laboratories that are registered. So this is a huge amount. We will probably not be able to organize for the global level every year. But this is why also it's important that the regions organize their own PT. And after this, there is a coordination and harmonization between the different regions. And I think the Europe has probably the most advanced laboratories for the quality because there are many controls. Many government have made the controls of the quality in soil laboratories mandatory. So I think the Glossolan really need these laboratories to participate. And the benefit for them is to share, see the comparability inside Europe. And this is where Glossolan can have a unique input, even for a region just like Europe. Europe, when I mean Europe, I mean Eurasia too, of course, huh? of a map we have seen from Atlantic to Pacific, because this, this is probably where we have the highest number of skilled labs for that activity. But the benefit for them will be also to have a comparability among them in all that big region and among all over uh regions and laboratories in the world yeah thanks christian for sharing for stressing this i think the main key message of your contribution now is that closer activities are available for free so this is the one of the the main one of the main point of the network is that we organize training for free and we aim to have to organize uh to find financial resources to allow labs to join the pt for free and the second is the cooperation of course I mean, like the idea is that to share samples, to share knowledge, even many university labs from Europe have received samples from different parts of the world through the day, through international students. So maybe useful to share samples from different parts of the world during the PT as well. So I don't know if there are any, any more contribution. I propose to follow up on the on the inputs from Joao and, yeah. and start thinking again to organize a regional PT soon as we have already the pt from portugal yeah uh, we will follow up on this we can organize a working group coordinating on this yeah and uh, following up also the training on internal quality control okay thank you i don't know if I there are any more georgie uh, has a question yeah please just uh, to uh, comment uh, shortly also on this uh, 
also in our laboratory. So we are uh, preparing our internal quality control samples. But of course, this is very small amount, which is sufficient for us. And we have more simple tools and smaller tools to do this. <laughs> and OK, I don't know how good we are in this, but we try to do our best. So uh, in case we we will get some um, support in terms of uh, also knowledge and uh, better arrangement of the equipment which can be used for a larger amount of samples. So we, we would like to be involved so we, we can do this. So we have sufficient space and uh, staff members to use uh, this equipment. So we, we will need just some training and also some guidelines regarding uh, proper preparation of the uh, or selection of the equipment, uh, which is uh, which helps to do it in the right way. Thank you very much. This is uh, very good to hear this. Thanks, Georgie. And I, I think perhaps, uh, Filippo, after this meeting, we can make a small working group, at least with Joao and Georgie, and see if other countries, because I think perhaps some lab managers or laboratories have to think about it and discuss with their staff and some other labs can be interested later on, but at least we have two countries with very different soil types and we, we can start with this. So thank you very much for volunteering. Really, thanks again. Thanks a lot to, to all of you. Um, I think we can um, uh, proceed to the next item if there is no uh, any other inputs on this, on this, on this topic. Uh, well, now the next item is uh, about the Glosolan, uh, the Rosolan position in uh, in Glosolan. Uh, so I think Lucrezia, you can start, and then uh, if you, then I will I can continue. If you can share your screen, or you want me to do. Yeah, it. let me share my screen, Filippo. I'm working with the drive uh, on the yeah, drive. Yeah, I can. I already lost connection once. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen? Sure, please. Okay, so as usual, uh, we have to discuss the position of Eurozolan in Glossy, in, uh, of Eurozolan in Glossolan, uh, to be presented by the Eurozolan chair at the next uh, Glossolan meeting. We will start uh, from uh, the hottest topic in the agenda, that is uh, the decision on the next SOPs for Glossolan to harmonize. This is just to remind you that so far priority was given to soil chemical parameters. So in 2020, Glossolan started to work uh, on uh, soil physical and biological parameters, no? as I uh, told you in item one. Uh, still, so far, the, we've focused on the most important parameters for soil fertility and on the most used methods in the world. This is an overview of the SOPs uh, we have been and are harmonizing at present. So you saw, as you can see, we started with a few methods in 2018 and we increased the number of methods harmonized in 2019. Uh, out of uh, the ones in the list, uh, we uh, decided to postpone the harmonization of the MELIT three uh, method uh, to 2020 in order to include also uh, micro and macronutrients. And uh, uh, still we, we face some delays on the harmonization of the SOP on min mineral nitrogen, but that's also coming. In 2020, the list of SOPs to harmonize is massive, <laughs> but uh, we are getting there. So as I told you at the beginning, we aim to have all these SOPs published by the end of the year. Just a reflection, uh, five years after the establishment of Glossolan, uh, we might be ready to make a step forward and start working on those methods that are less frequently used, but have lower risk for the human health and the environment. Uh, I hope you browse through our Glossolan webpage, uh, but this is just to remind you that uh, in the page dedicated to the SOPs, there is also a reflection on the risk for human health and the environment uh, related to the implementation of this method. No? So, so far, all the methods we harmonize have medium to high levels of uh, risk. So just uh, again, a reflection <laughs> before we, we really decide what SOPs to propose to Glossolan. Maybe uh, we might start looking into more sustainable methods. Uh, and this also links to the fact that often uh, the Glossolan secretariat, if, you, if we like to call it like that, uh, receive requests for support from laboratories. 
And uh, indeed, the laboratories ask us uh, what method to use for analyzing certain soil parameters. Uh, of course, we ask, we tell them to go, to rely on this table. But the problem is that, again, we, we all have methods with medium to high levels of rate. Um, as usual, while we propose uh, uh, the SOPs to harmonize next year, we also identify regional leaders that can have uh, take the leadership on the harmonization on the SOPs. This is just to remind you what the regional leaders do. So they contribute to prepare the SOP matrix, that is the Excel table that we ask all Glossoline members to complete, uh, to complete every year, basically. And there is one matrix for each uh, method. And the matrix inquire on the procedures implemented in each laboratory for a certain method. Uh, then the regional leader uh, should harmonize the information in the matrix from their region contribute to the global harmonization of the information, and ultimately contribute to draft, review, finalize the Glossolan SOP. Each SOP has a regional leader that also serves as a, a global leader. And basically, this global leader is the one that takes the overall responsibility for the writing of the SOP. Now, we open the discussion. Uh, we hope to to not make it too long because this is the, the toughest part of, of uh, the meeting usually. On screen, I reported that the decisions made uh, at the AFRILAB, SILNET and LASTOLAN meeting that already took place. So just for your information and also inspiration, um, we will start from chemical parameters. So if you have any suggestion, on uh, the SOPs uh, for chemical parameters uh, that uh, uh, Glossolon should work in 2021, 20, 2022. I don't remember who has to help me on this. Let me uh, check the agenda. Georgie, but can, I think also Spella can help you. If yeah, maybe. Georgie and Spella, can you please uh, um, uh, moderate this session? So I will write, but if you could uh, help uh, <laughs> help to get uh, input that would be highly appreciated. Yes, we will try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for if, if we take uh, just uh, from the example, what we see uh, from Latsula, for example, in case of uh, acid soils, especially it is very important to have exchangeable acidity. Uh, it's from the then I'm also reading in the chat, they say loss of ignition. Yes, this is another important uh, parameter or method for very important parameter like organic carbon. So everybody is welcome to take the floor or write in the chat, eh? just to make it clear for those that are new to this. In terms of safety, it's very good, especially and uh, low cost of assessment, especially for farmers when it's no, there's no need to uh, have very precise uh, results. Organic carbon by dry combustion is Dumas method, right? No, this is another one. So that combustion we already have, this is loss on ignition just in muffled furnace. So just by heating without any additional treatments. Ah, so, but organic carbon by dry combustion is the same of total carbon by loss of ignition. Joao, um, if you want to take the floor no. also. No. <laughs> ah, okay, so I add this other one. Joao, I think you have your hand up, if you want to. Okay. Yes, sorry. Uh, I think that uh, loss on ignition uh, in a furnace is not for total carbon, but it's for organic matter. Yeah. Yeah, organic carbon, yeah. Uh, organic matter. Yes, not organic matter. Not organic, organic carbon. Organic uh, matter. But, but anyway, it's not a... only. But <laughs> okay, uh, it's a loss of mass by ignition. Um, another group of methods. Uh, it's uh, the um, iron and the aluminum oxides by uh, oxalates. Yeah or by um, uh, sodium citrate and uh, deutinate. Uh, deutinate. Uh, 
did unite i don't know yeah did you unite, yeah. can you write uh, in the chat for for my ignorant <laughs> oxides so two, only oxides, uh, oxides. Uh, only this uh, okay. there are two reference methods but it's probably uh, okay. Which one did you do? Yeah, which else? method? By what method? By ammonium oxalate or uh, pyrophosphate sodium or sodium citrate and not with uh, pyrophosphate and uh, CBD okay uh, they are not so used uh, as this but uh, I uh, I agree or by pyrophosphate so yes. pyrophosphate Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Joao. And also, whoever took the floor that I didn't see. <laughs> it's Maritela from CIRAD. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> so any other suggestion for chemical parameters? Okay, what about uh, uh, physical parameters? There's another input from the chat about chemical. Okay. I, I think, okay, so you should separate for the iron and uh, aluminum oxide by the, uh, these three reagents because it's not the same. So it should be different SOP. So like this. No, no, no. Iron, iron and aluminum oxide by ammonium oxidate, oxalate, and then uh, perlite aluminum by sodium citrate. Because now they propose three uh, three uh, ah, solutions. Okay. Like this. Yes. Okay. Then water retention. Yeah. Water retention curve. And they're also proposing uh, laser diffraction for texture. Mm -hmm. Laser, laser, di laser diffraction. For, for textural class. Okay. No, not, not this one. Refraction. <coughs> RE. RE, not the. Ah, diffraction. Okay. Yes. What about uh, CEC? Yes, you see this. Yeah. So barium chloride is also very yeah. good and widespread. Uh, you 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 mean the composite method CEC for for barium, barium chloride? Barium chloride. Mm Okay. They are proposing aggregate also, stability. Yeah. Bulk density, we already did it. Nitrogen by dry combustion, again, it's not the same of uh, Dumas, right? It's it's same. No, it's the yeah. same. Then we already did it. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
I think it's sufficient for. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> say, I was about to say the same. I think it's more than enough. Just to answer the question on, uh, it would be interesting. Well, the reflection. It would be interesting to know how many labs perform a certain analysis. In my idea, to facilitate the discussion at the Glossal and meet it is indeed that of opening a survey. So we will uh, inquire on how many laboratories perform the analysis that you see on screen now. And uh, I hope this would help the discussion at the Glossal and meeting. So we can, uh, we can any, vote per each or how to do? Yeah, yeah, I'm still thinking about how to do it, but uh, I would like to know how many labs uh, do exchangeable acidity by this method and, and so on, so that we, we can get some numbers that would help the discussion at the meeting. We, we have the purpose from uh, Anna from Russian that uh, they, they measure the iron by dithionized solver. By what? Dithionized. Iron. Yeah. So iron by? Dithionized solver. No, it's the, uh, sorry. Uh, it's the same because it's the sodium citrate and the diotonite. It's both chemical, both reagents. So I leave it like this. Yes, uh, and uh, is sodium citrate plus sodium uh, diotonite, di uh, diotonite, or something like this in English. Sorry, no, uh, di. <laughs> Di, uh, Dithionate, I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, no, I can send you. Uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, thank uh, you. Basha. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, uh, you have uh, the, sec the third chemical parameter, uh, organic carbon by dry combustion, uh, it's, it's the, the, the Dumas method. It's yeah, right. that's what I was asking, but it seems like no. Is it the same of uh, total carbon Dumas. by Dumas? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Yes, it should be. There is another one that is uh, made with um, different temperature with the, yeah. uh, new instruments, yeah. dry combustion. Uh, that um, that is uh, that can, you can determine uh, both uh, organic carbon and inorganic carbon at different temperature. It's a dry combustion, but it's a particular one. Um, it's uh, I, I can write you the dean maybe, not now, but um, with with scalar temperature, I think that the method is. Miss Vinci, I wrote your name next to this, so okay. I will ask. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> okay, uh, there is a question on SOPs on four soil contaminants. Uh, if you like, we can also look into this, yes. And uh, with regards to soil contaminants and also soil biological parameters, uh, it would be great if you could, if you could spread the word uh, on Glossolan in your country and invite laboratories that really do this type of analysis to join the network, because otherwise we, we have troubles in um, the harmonization of the SOPs, because we mostly work with the laboratories that work on soil fertility and chemical analysis in general. Lucrecia? Yes. I would like to speak. One of my colleagues could not join. He has problem in connecting, but we discussed about a biological parameter. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that to know the microbial diversity, you need a first step that is uh, DNA extraction. Yeah. So he said that DNA extraction should be standardized because you have only at the moment commercial kits. And there is an ISO method, but that fits only for a few limited number of soils. From his experience, if you go out of that limited range of soils, the method does not work. And this extraction is the first step you have to do for everything. So I will give you his name and he can act uh, for this, but he could not join now. Yeah, so you said this is the basis of uh, microbial identification, right? Yeah, he mentioned about the extraction. Yeah, the, the procedure. We have, 
to do the extraction should be standardized? We have a partner on biological parameters uh, that works only on DNA techniques. And uh, so far they couldn't contribute because we are not uh, working on these methods, but uh, it would be good if you can give me the name and uh, yeah. eventually we put them in touch. Yeah. So microbial biomass, this also, we are doing it already. Uh, microbial biomass, microbial yes, interaction also, and soil respiration rate. Yeah. Uh, I think we have enough. <laughs> we, we have beta. I, I don't know which country, but uh, she proposed to commit on the organic carbon determination by the mass if we need to do this SOP. Yes, uh, thank you. My name is Beata. I'm uh, from AgroCars <laughs> from the Netherlands. Um, okay, thank you. And I would like to comment on the organic carbon determination by dry combustion. Uh, there is, that's alternative uh, method to total carbon determination. And uh, it requires uh, acidifying samples with the hydrochloric acid uh, before uh, analyzing it with automated analyzer. So it's not exactly the same determination as total uh, carbon by dry combustion. Um, so I would like to as well propose it as an alternative uh, method to Walkley Black and uh, um, loss on ignition because that's that's uh, as well different determination that was discussed by a colleague before. I uh, sorry I cannot recall your name, and it doesn't require to use a different modify the temperature and gradient increase of the temperature in order to define different fraction of uh, carbon in soil samples. There are, those are two different uh, methods. Yes, I've, I've written in the chat the, the name of the method I, I was talking about before. Um, this is a proposal of uh, uh, European standard, and it recalls uh, uh, Dean standard, uh, German standard. Um, but it, this is with different temperature, whereas the other, the dry combustion method doesn't, uh, I don't know if it's the same as the... Uh... Uh, so, uh, Miss Vinci and uh, Beata, are you talking about the same thing? No, we are not talking about the same no. uh, method. One method requires to, to apply different uh, temperatures and in different temperature in the uh, combustion at the different temperature, you define different fraction of carbon. So you can identify inorganic and uh, organic fraction of the sample while dry combustion only for organic carbon determination requires a, a prior to analysis acidify sample with acid. Sorry, could I uh, can I try the discussion? Yes, yes. sure. <laughs> uh, okay, I I agree with the the, the, the two colleagues, but uh, to simplify the the the, the SOPs. Uh, I think that uh, the, two the two alternatives, the acidification of the sample and the different uh, temperatures in ignition, it could be an update of the SOP of the carbon by dry combustion. If not, we uh, begin to have uh, uh, different uh, SOPs for uh, in the same subject. Uh, and I think it was uh, better to uh, update the SOP of uh, total carbon. I agree. Yeah. The only that they need uh, different instrumentation. That's the only. Yes, and yeah. you don't define not, the, not the uh, same treatment. Well, I, and, I, I think Sorry. in the SOP of the total carbon, we have uh, we have mentioned about the temperature is 900 to 1000 degree. But in the case of organic carbon, I don't think that this is the temperature that they, they, they analyze. Well, 
the the temperature of course are different and for yeah. organic carbon we're looking at at the temperature above 1000 celsius degrees but as well we are looking to the different fraction of the carbon so it won't be total carbon determination it will be organic carbon fraction only mm. not, not the same so it's not the same parameter yeah not the same because you you you, you will need to have some uh, pre-treatment yes exactly so the inorganic in case of a uh, uh, acidifying sample, you remove the inorganic fraction uh, from the sample and you define only organic carbon fraction. While with the PCD uh, method, so the method mentioned with the different temperatures, you define in different temperature, different fraction of the carbon. And by summing those results, you obtain total uh, content of the carbon in the soil. So those are three different methods, total carbon uh, with the static temperature, carbon fraction with the gradient has uh, written before an organic carbon with the acidification with uh, as well measured at the static temperature. So I agree with the last comment in the chat. Those are three different determinations. Yeah. Mm. So uh, regarding the acidification, it's not a, a different method. It's a, 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 a pre-treatment of the sample. Yes, that's correct. That's pre-treatment to the sample, yes. which... Uh, yes, the method is the same in the yes. static temperature. Yes, the static temperature, uh, just the pre-treatment yes. uh, with the acid. And it, and it was only... A, a, uh, uh update uh, for uh, in the in the previous uh, SOP for uh, calcareous soils or soils with, uh, with inorganic carbon yeah for acid soils there is no participant in it so i'm reporting Mary. yes <laughs> <laughs> Please. Excuse me, may I contribute a bit? Uh, so my general opinion is that this um, list of the chemical parameters for the SOPs planned for the next period is a bit too ambitious because these methods are quite demanding. And also uh, uh, we plan to, to produce the SOPs for the same property by different uh, uh, analysis, different method. So I would, I would suggest okay. to reduce this list, to, to take only one property and one method, like CEC by barium chloride or oxides, because I'm, uh, I'm thinking about how many uh, labs would uh, contribute in oxides uh, uh, analysis it's it's not easy to find because these analyses are, are not routine analysis so much easier is for total carbon or total organic carbon because nowadays they perform this in an, in by automat automatized uh, methods so it's much easier but oxides not that's my opinion so we can discuss Well, I, I agree and the oxides uh, determination of iron and aluminum are quite rare and they are not common analysis as well in the commercial laboratories. That's um, actually my background. Uh, so uh, there mostly is- Mostly for research. Yes, yes it's mostly, mostly for research purposes. It's uh, not uh, daily uh, analysis, which is perform in uh, commercial laboratories, to my experience. Uh, I agree. Okay. Uh, uh, the pyrophosphate extraction, uh, I agree. But the other two, uh, ammonium oxalate and the sodium uh, citrate, they are used for soil classification and soil mapping. Okay, yes. So this one I delayed. Uh, iron and aluminum oxides by uh, Pyrophosphate. This I deleted. 
and maybe we leave also CAC by barium chloride only, as suggested by Maria. Yes. I agree with this. So I deleted this one. Yeah. Okay. Others agree as well. Still, <laughs> yeah. I, can you clarify all of this? So we keep these uh, three, and maybe the proposal of Miss Vinci is um, the second one, carbon fractions. Can it be? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not sure it's mm -hmm. so important to delay to the cobalti examine extraction because uh, for the future and to compare with the other uh, continents, it's better because for acid soil, acidic soils, it's the best uh, method. So I think it's important to keep it. For tropical soil, typically is uh, the, the, the best method. So can I say postpone? Not uh, pyrophosphate. It's for examine cobalti extraction for the CEC. Uh -huh. No, the, the for CEC. I don't mean that uh, it's uh, not important, uh, any of uh, this uh, method, but I, um, uh, I think about uh, the possibility to produce all these SOPs in the next period. That's my, <laughs> that's my question, because it's rather demanding to prepare how, how, this However, However, I think that we will make a survey to see that how, how much member that uh, implement in this method before we are going to make the conclusion of that which method that we will see later. Yeah, these are just proposal. Thereafter at the Glossoran mm -hmm. meeting, we will make the final decision. Also using the results of this survey, I would like to launch maybe at the end of this week after the Nina Lab meeting that will be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So all these and methods will be in the survey and we will see how many labs really use them. So if you want, I can also keep this and let's see. Look at this, uh, Lauris from Latvia. Yes. I uh, just wanted to clarify, you know, those organic carbons and different carbons. Uh, uh, <laughs> the first is the organic mass uh, matter uh, that could stay. The next is a uh, first total carbon. We already have that. It is the Dumas method. This one, yes. right? Sir? Yes. Yeah. So this one, I believe. Yes. Uh, the third, yeah. if we wish to include uh, it. Carbon fractionation. Uh, okay. The third one, organic carbon by static temp temperature prior acidification. If we wish to include it, it should be an basically a revision or updated Dumas method because it's the same no, the same equipment. We simply pre-treat the sample, so it should be not a separate SOP. It should be an update to Dumas method. And the remaining two carbon fractions, temperature gradient and organic carbon by dry combustion, those are the same things. This. So. Uh, and the Organic carbon by static temperature and organic carbon by dry combustion are the same things. Mm. The one below, above and one below. So these two, uh, carbon yes, fractions, the temperature and gradient carbon and, and temperature. And this one is the yes, same. Those are the same. Perfect. And, but they are quite a bit rarer. No, they're not commonly used. OK. So let me do like this. Many, many thanks for clarifying because I was a bit lost on this, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, it's enough. Um, Gan, you wanted to take the floor before, right? Maybe to talk about uh, uh, isopion pollution on pollutants. Okay, can I go for it? Yes, please. Okay, um, so hello, hello everyone. First, I would like to uh, share my comments on uh, microbial identification part. I actually do agree with uh, the Christian uh, in that we should go to the uh, microbial <clears throat> diversity parameters uh, as much as possible. Maybe we should start from the functional diversity kind of things like PLFA or community level physiological performance, which we can uh, determined by using plate technologies, as uh, most of you distinguished scientists can be uh, familiar with. Uh, but on the other hand, I have uh, several concerns about all these things because they are extremely expensive and you need uh, certain infrastructures. 
I don't know how um, it could be possible to standardize all these things in in a certain um, time of period. But but um, regarding DNA extraction, I have a, a one big concern. So you have to use um, uh, DNA kits, as um, as Kristen mentioned. So, but if you if you do extraction and then if you go to a company for a sequence analysis, because most of the traditional methods actually like TRFLP or RFLP yeah, or DGGA that we used uh, in the past for uh, mm -hmm. microbial identification, um, actually are re replacing with uh, modern technologies like uh, sequence, next generation sequence analysis. So mm -hmm. it is so expensive that um, uh, I'm pretty sure that most of the laboratories, even in de developed countries, uh, might be difficult to establish such infrastructures, right? Uh, and then the other option is uh, going to a private biotechnology or analysis companies for sequence analysis. But in that case, they offer you uh, X or Y um, DNA kit. I mean, they, they just tell you the DNA kit you should use to, to analyze your samples. So in that case, actually, you, you wouldn't have any uh, other option to go. You, you cannot buy cheaper DNA kits because they say, OK, you use this kit. We may not be able to uh, give you a good results. So please prefer the kits we offer you. But this has happened to me two times um, last year. So I'm not sure how we can overcome such problems in our countries. Um, so my idea is maybe we can try uh, to standardize sequence analysis, but not a DNA extraction part, because we strongly depend on um, DNA kits provided by private companies. And there are several kids fighting each other you know, uh, in that uh, part. Uh, regarding uh, contaminants, maybe I can tell uh, about my ideas on soil contaminants uh, later. Uh, we, uh, we discuss about soil biology. Lucrezia, should I continue? Yes, please. Thank you. OK. Um, so far, we have been talking about uh, traditional concerns on soil pollution, but I would like to offer all of us to think about um, a recent a hidden dangers like microplastics in soil. So, so far we have been talking about um, uh, plastic soups for oceans, but not only uh, surface water sources, but also soil resources uh, is facing this danger. I mean, using of plastics and contaminant resource uh, are to having the future of soil resources. So I will suggest us to think about a microplastic or, or commonly saying a plastic um, extraction and identification in soil, if possible. Thank you so much. Many, many thanks, Khan. Um, I see that uh, uh, yeah, there are also um, supports to your statements. Um, does anyone wants to rebut to this? Shall I change anything in this table? Um, I think we just uh, should concentrate on more widely used methods and just agree on those which are really more commonly used and has a wide range of application to most of types of soils. So if there's very specific ones, uh, of course, we may skip or postpone it for later use. Okay. So just to uh, finalize the discussion, uh, does anyone would like to be a regional leader for the SOP on exchangeable activity in case uh, Glossolon agrees to harmonize it. I can be. George is too, no? Okay. Yeah. Um, organic matter by loss of ignition. 
Also, it's get, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. From Latvia, it's swollen clear for organic matter by loss of ignition. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thanks, Doris. <laughs> okay, organic carbon by static temperature. Well, the other, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Can I? Can I add you? <laughs> Get out sure. And uh, anyone else for this SOP? Vin Vinci, no? Before that, you have one name. Yeah, but uh, Vinci is for carbon fractions. Oh, okay. If uh, mm. she agrees. Mm. Elena, take the one of the for that aluminum Wait, let me by oxidate. Let me go in order, otherwise I get lost. Uh, yes, um, as said before, temperature gradient is a method, it's, um, a new method, a new instrumentation. So it can be postponed maybe. It's, it's not so relevant now, by now, if you agree. Yes, well, that, I agree. Yes, you want to postpone it? Yes. Please. So this one that we put as postponed, uh, uh, shall I include them in the survey? I will uh, open for Glossal members. So we get at least an idea, but then we don't uh, propose them for harmonization at the meeting. Okay. So does anyone else would like to work on iron and aluminum oxidized by ammonium oxalate? Elena volunteered, anyone else? Who would like to work on, uh, uh, on the same, but uh, using sodium citrate plus sodium dithionate? <laughs> Elena again volunteered, anyone else? Okay, what about, uh, well, we said this one we skip. Um, CEC by examine. <laughs> examine cobalt. Cobalt hexamine. <laughs> Do we want to identify a leader for this as well? Or we skip it? We may skip it. Okay, yeah. Yata said. Yata. Yeah, just ask because I see that uh, Maritela from Sirad has mm -hmm. mentioned about this method, and I don't know yeah. if she has time to work on it or if she's interested. No, um, think... we work on it uh, uh, every day. And uh, finally, it's uh, a common uh, method in the laboratory. Uh, I participate to uh, um, lab uh, uh, determination. It's uh, called BPA. I don't know if you know it, but uh, finally, it's a common method for a lot of laboratories. Maybe not. Uh, maybe they are not present here, but uh, I can say you a lot of laboratory in Europe use this method. Yes, I, I agree. This is one of the most common methods, uh, which is uh, worldwide used, except uh, ammonium acetate. And uh, yes. well, it works way better for, like you mentioned, for uh, tropical soils rather than ammonium acetate. Yes, but it's a good method for the other salts. So you can have just one method for all the salts. So. So Maritel, can I add you to? Yes, you can. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, CEC by by barium chloride, I think it's called. Any volunteer? No volunteer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Let's put uh, physical parameters. Anyone interested in water retention? Aurora. Aurora from Belgium. Thank you, Aurora. And texture determination by laser diffraction. 
Lauris. 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 Thank you, Lauris. And Beata. aggregate stability. Beata, you, you can help on texture. Yes, I can help on texture determination, definitely. Thank you. Aggregate stability. Anyone? Biological parameters. So, yeah, I will give you the name of my colleague. Uh, I will write it. Uh... Uh, Mali would like to help for the water retention also. Yeah, no. from Sea Lab. Marie from Sealand. Thank you. So you can put my name for barium chloride methods. So I like this. Grazie, Giorgi. Okay, done. This was the toughest part, and we are perfectly on time. Uh, anyway, we will follow up on this by email, um, especially after the Glossolan meeting. So thank you very much. Yes, only in the, in the small uh, issue. Uh, ex, I mean cobalt, and uh, not cow bolt. Cobalt. Cobalt. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. One, one more from Agrikit. Lucretia, mm -hmm. are we going to add public comments? If you want, if uh, the group wants, yes. Yeah, I'm offering um, to adding soil plastics. Soil plastics. Yeah, we can add it to the, the section of soil um, chemistry, yeah. Uh, let's say uh, plastic pollutions, soil plastic pollutions or microplastic pollutions. I don't mm -hmm. know. So can I add you to this work? To... Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we have enough. Excuse can me, we... one question for the colleague for Turkey. Do you have any... Um, methods that you use for the plastics in soil determination? Um, yeah, well, thank you so much for the, the questions. Very nice question. Actually, there are several methods, but not uh, uh, commonly accepted one at this moment. So uh, there are several um, scientists and countries, let's say, uh, using different methodologies, but there is no uh, one uh, commonly accepted Stand method. or standard method not not yeah. yet established that's my uh, some uh, concern that we uh, we cannot find enough laboratories that perform these methods that's a problem we, we have to foresee the possibility for, to harmonize the method if we develop the CLP. it may be a problem so that we can discuss this yes Valmi is uh, inquire about PAH, P-A-H. It's much easier because there are standard methods already developed for P-A-H. Okay. Richard, may I add a comment on the plastic? Sure, Christoph, please. Yeah, um, yeah I, I agree with the comment of uh, Maricha as well. Um, in my opinion, uh, the plastic pollution and especially the microplastic is really still in a really research and development phase. Uh, from, I think, uh, next month, uh, under the SEN standardization, so European standardization, a technical committee will start on the development of European standards for soil and solid environmental matrices on uh, microplastics. So 
but it's really at a very preliminary stage, I would say. So as compared to all the other parameters in this list, I agree that it will be very difficult within the coming years even to find a harmonized method as I think this is still now uh, under discussion. So um, I'm also in doubt if we have to put already uh, microplastic, especially on the list right now. But if everybody thinks in the same way, um, yeah, we can remove it. So you mean we should wait for a while, right, Christophe? Yes, yes, this is what I, especially if I compared it with the other parameters on this list, I think we are maybe, we need to wait maybe several years now, uh, or at least see how this will evolve on uh, international level, which method comes up before we start writing subs and try to harm it. Yes, this is, would be my uh, suggestion. Thank you. Like this. If it's useful, we can also launch a survey on this, uh, to see how and if the laboratories assess it. Okay. Mm, if there are no other comments, I thank you very much for your contribution and for volunteering to, to work <laughs> next year. Uh, this is just to remind you that all laboratories sending information and all authors are acknowledging the Grossrun SOPs. As you can see at the end, like at the bottom of the page of each SOP, it's reported the name of the global leader of the working group and then other information on the, the endorsement of the SOP. There is an appendix with acknowledgement, an appendix with the list of authors, and an appendix with the list of contributing laboratories. So basically all laboratories that uh, completed the, the harmonization matrix. Uh, this is to open another discussion uh, that uh, links on the issues and contrary in harmonizing the SOPs uh, we, we are doing now. Um, as I anticipated in uh, item one, so for some SOPs, especially those on biological parameters, uh, we had very few laboratories comp completing the harmonization matrix. So my question is, can we still talk about globally harmonized SOPs if we have little line of information to harmonize? And uh, eventually, shall we review our way to harmonize this type of SOP? Then the second problem regards the composition of the working group. Again, for some SOP, we have very few experts in the working group. And this uh, uh, is slowing down the wall harmonization problem. A process. This is not really a problem of experts willing to contribute uh, to, to, the, to the harmonization process, but it's a problem of uh, finding experts on a specific methods because uh, there are very few. Um, if you like, I can tell you what uh, other um, resonance um, came up in uh, response to these issues. So for the first point, they said that uh, uh, we will not change the way to harmonize the SOPs and that, uh, yes, we can still um, talk about globally harmonized SOPs. Just eventually, we have to involve more laboratories no, in the, the Glossolan network. That's why I was asking you to spread the voice uh, uh, on Glossolan to laboratories that do other types of analysis, like biological analysis, Physical analysis still, we need of laboratories, more laboratories that do this type of analysis, and then eventually pollution and so on. For the second point, they said uh, that it would be good, uh, well, indeed, right, to spread the voice on Glossolan again, to involve more laboratories, and eventually ask uh, top experts on uh, a specific method or on the analysis of uh, specific parameters. Uh, to take care of the harmonization of the SOP. So in this case, like uh, kind of uh, abolish the working groups for some SOPs and just uh, ask a, a top expert on the topic to take care of the, of the harmonization process. Uh, now I open the floor for comments and the suggestions. Let me go in editing mode.
So to answer this, there is a suggestion from Lauris to um, run a survey to inquire on the most used methods. And thereafter still work on the harmonization of the uh, most used methods. Uh, right, Lauris, that's your suggestion. Any other suggestion? Okay, agreement from uh, Turkey. Anyone else? Okay, what about the second uh, point? Because on the first one, there is agreement. What about the problem of the experts? So do you agree on uh, what other resonance suggested to remit the uh, writing of, the, of some SOPs to top experts, so not to have working groups uh, anymore for some SOPs? So we ask a top expert to take care of everything. I agree with this because I also recognize the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's better to give to one expert or a group of experts to harmon or who, to develop the SOP and then send it for harmonizing than to give to the working group because sometimes there is no good uh, contacts or responses from the uh, group. We can still have the review panel, eh? so. Okay, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we abolish the working group, but we have still the review panel. Yeah, but only for some particular uh, SOPs, yeah. which are more, let's say, more demanding. Yeah, yeah. I will highlight this. Some SOP, no, indeed, we want to keep it participatory, so. <coughs> okay, any other remark on this? We are getting to the end, just resist <laughs> 10 more minutes. Maybe let me go to this. Um, so the Global Soil Partnership asked Losolan to work on range of reference values to facilitate the provision, provision of recommendations to farmers and other stakeholders. Uh, so, as you know, they always look at us as a, a good example and a great uh, team to implement work. So, but I want to ask you for an opinion on this, starting from the range values. So, by range values, uh, we, uh, we mean a, a range of validity of a method. For example, method X is reliable for, for example, soil organic carbon content from a certain value to another one. And they would like us to include this information in the Glossolan SOPs. So, Filippo, can you launch the poll? Or if you want to have a discussion first, otherwise we open the poll. And the question is, do you agree on including range values in the Glossolan SOPs? So you should have a kind of window on your screen uh, with a question and then uh, um, two possible answers, yes or no. As soon as we reach majority, we close. Uh, I apologize. Maybe I don't understand well. Uh, uh, the range uh, of the range of, of the value of the results for the particular uh, application for the method and also to different stakeholders. Uh, but the validation of the method is different thing. So who, who, would, uh, who will uh, carry out the, the validation pro procedure? Hmm. <laughs> validation is not the maybe it's, a, it's only terminology in question. I don't understand completely valid uh, this validation indicates. Basically, they want to know the reliability of the method. So, like uh, this method can be used for soil that contain uh, up to a certain amount of. Uh, uh, 
but but when we uh, when we produce the, the, the SOPs, we do, don't do the validation of the methods, as far as I know now. Yeah, validation we should, should be validate done in the lab. The Excuse, yes, please, Georgie. The validation should be done in the lab. So, so uh, each lab should validate this, yes. but we also should offer the validation, the initial validation from the producers of the method, no? That would be for them to, to refer to these validation results. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> please, maybe the others can, uh, can comment. But the ranges included in the, the uh, SOPs are very useful. I agree with that. I just uh, don't know how we will how we can do uh, define these ranges <laughs> based yeah, on which validation method. Yeah, they say yeah, the same comment came from the colleagues from Latsolan from Latin America. So they say, okay, this can be very useful, but we are not sure if we can do it by ourselves. We may establish, uh, like, work on this together with the colleagues from other dealers of action of GSP, from other from other experts because. Uh, Especially the next question that Progetze will will give you is about also research. Some kind of depend, these depend on instruments, as it was mentioned in the chat, and it's not that like a straightforward process maybe to identify these range values. For sure, they are useful, but it's not easy to identify them for each SOP. So we may, so if I correctly got the comment, it's like okay, we we can think to work on it, but Let's think how. And for some parameters, we will not have range value. So there are parameters where there's no range value. So we just determine that that's it. <laughs> so it's not applicable. So. Also, I am reading in the chat. Uh, there are methods with the stable range and also it dependent on equipment and other factors. It should be up to the lab itself and should be up to the validation or verification in the lab. So indicating ranges, it will just, uh, it's just good to, to see the limitations of the methods for specific soils with specific content, like organic carbon and some other stuff. Okay. Okay. Perhaps uh, in a few years, when we have each year the PT, we will gather results from for different ranges, such as for different values of soils. So perhaps we can then establish the ranges easily. Perhaps postpone postpone these ranges because otherwise we would really someone would have to validate the methods in the upper and the uh, lower range. So if you agree, like we can rely on what Rugetsa mentioned on the screen. So I think she collect all your comments. Well, and how about we narrow this down to soil types, if the method is reliable for acidic or uh, more basic soils, that will be easier to uh, narrow down in the first stage than uh, run a full validation. Yes. That's true. It's anyway. It's, some of the methods are so specific, so type specific. Anyway, okay. Some are more universal. So, I think this is not only about the, the infrastructures or the physical conditions, but also uh, soil characteristics, as noticed by the previous speaker. For example, in our country, the soil organic matter content is less than one percent in most cases. So. Um, I, I don't think a method, you know, which is uh, which uh, concerned as a um, high validity, let's say, can be the case, in, you know, in, in our country. So um, this question is really difficult to answer, and and, and it may take many years to you know, to to reach to a, a reliable um, results. I think.
Yes, and then I think like um, I, you can see that the discussion, the topic is very, is, is not easy. So again, this is just a, 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 like a, a first step discussion because this topic will be discussed again at Glossola meeting with all the colleagues from uh, the different regions because we, we ask this question to each regional network and, and some of them, let's say many of them agree with, with your points that you're raising now. Uh, this, as a request that we receive for the people who make it, who made it can be very easy to request, but it is not actually in the lab, from the lab perspective. So we can keep this for discussing during those on a meeting and share the opinion of the different region and take into account all the things that you said. We are noting them down so we can, uh, uh, we can then um, discuss this again very very soon again the global meeting will take place uh, in um, in uh, in november so this will be again discussed there uh, but i think we can i think we, we have to more discuss more about this uh let me share the presentation because i think congrats has issues so um let me go back where she was i'm here i'm here ah, okay can you share again sorry i are you not see my screen no i because i was i was about to sharing my ah. <laughs> No, thank you, Philip. Um, okay, then the last last uh, point for decision, and now really we, we close with the governance uh, is again about the reference value. So in this case, they are requesting Glossoland to provide an indication on the status of soil. For example, from a certain value to a certain value. Uh, the methods indicate that soils are poor in phosphorus or they have low medium content of phosphorus or medium content, medium high, and so on. So again, we have a poll for this, but I don't know if you want to have a discussion instead. Maybe we can just to have an idea. This is, this is uh, very specific, I think, and it can vary from place to place. So even under more or less same soil climatic conditions, there can be uh, different uh, values. For example, if we take like phosphorus, for example, yeah, even the same method like Olsen, which is quite widespread. If you mm -hmm. take different reference literatures and compare, there can be different uh, range values for uh, like uh, poor or rich soils and so on. So yeah, indeed, like many, one of the opinion from the other region was that this involved a lot about research and compiling the literature that I was already producing in this regard. So this is also something that we can coordinate if the network decide to do this with the other uh, area of action of GSP, like research, for instance, because this is really connected to the land use and to the other research that uh, and literature that has been already produced. But I see that Joao, you have your uh, uh, yes. Up. Uh, I think this is an important issue, but it's not a, a problem of the method. And we are concerned about methodology. Uh, the interpretation uh, and the calibration of the methods, it's an agronomist problem and an environmental problem, not a laboratory problem. And uh, I'm afraid that we are expanding too much our uh, ambitions. Responsibilities. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, uh, I do not agree, we, uh, but it's only my opinion. We are mainly concerned about uh, methodology. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading in the chat, everybody agrees with Joao and also Georgie. So no, <laughs> we have a poll if you like, we launch it, but uh, can we agree on no? I think yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank this you. Is, this is poor experimental uh, thing which should be done in the field experiment. So uh, very hard to define from the lab side. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Now we go to the very, very uh, last presentation of, uh, of this meeting that is about governance.
we will quickly go through it. So as you know, that the, the governance of uh, Rosalan was defined at its first meeting in 2019. In that occasion, it was decided to have one chair, one vice chair, and one working group. The mandate for the position of chair and vice chair was uh, two years, and the terms of reference, well, are in uh, an annex of the first Eurozolan meeting. So in that occasion, uh, Georgie and Spela were uh, elected the chair and vice chair of, of Eurozolan. And unfortunately, their mandate uh, came to an end, an end. So I would like to thank them a lot on behalf of Eurozolan and Glossolan for their hard work for the network over these years. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all for supporting. If, if it was an in-person meeting, there would be a big applause for you, you know? <laughs> it's virtual, so I'm sorry. But many, many thanks, we really appreciate it. Uh, now, this is not a proposal for uh, vote because we hope you would agree. Uh, but uh, during these years, uh, we found out that there were some kind of issues in terms of communication, especially with countries in Eurasia, not because of the language barrier. Most of the laboratories in the Eurasia, Eurasian region speak Russian. So uh, we took some initiative and uh, uh, discussed the possibility to have a vice chair from Eurasia um, in, in, uh, in Eurozolan. Uh, Eurasian countries uh, agreed on it, welcomed this proposal, and I hope you as Eurozolan would also welcome this proposal so that at the end we would have, have one chair and two vice chairs, one to represent Europe and one to represent Eurasia and really follow up with laboratories in the sub-region in Russia. I hope you agree. If not, please uh, uh, tell us in the chat. So um, uh, now I will move to another proposal that, is, that relies on the fact that uh, in Latin America, they have a bit different gloss, uh, governance that resulted to be very efficient. So they have one chair, one vice chair, and uh, one steering committee. So my question to you is, uh, if you would like to have a steering committee to basically replace the working group you agreed to have at the first meeting, but that ultimately never got to work. And the steering committee should really be in charge of supporting the work of the chair and the two vice chairs. So what they're doing in Latin America is basically that they are dividing countries. So everyone uh, take, so every, person in the steering committee and also the chair and vice chair themselves take care of a few countries. So they do a one-to-one -one interaction, follow-ups, and then they have regular meetings, discuss, make plans on how to address national and regional challenges. Uh, we are informing you on this and proposing you to, to revise uh, your governance because in Latin America, it's extraordinary. Like they work super well, super well organized. So, Again, we will open a pool about it. If you welcome this idea, Filippo and myself will draft the terms of references for the steering committee and then uh, send it to you all for review. So you will have a say on uh, their task. So Filippo, can you please uh, uh, launch the poll? So the question is, uh, do you agree on establishing a steering committee in Eurozone? Yeah, and that I am the full test we reached the majority and let me share the yeah. results. Say all of them say yes. Many thanks. Proposal endorsed. Then I have another proposal. Uh, Glossolan, again, building on the success of uh, Latsolan and their work, and so would really like to strengthen the position of the chair and vice chairs of Eurozolan uh, in order to allow them to do better follow-ups in each country and in the overall region. 
This means that uh, Glossoland would share information and the contact uh, details of all laboratories in the network and, uh, you know, like uh, really inform better the chair and vice chairs that I have to admit so far we're not kept uh, uh, well informed from our side, so I apologize for this. And so they, these also imply that they were not uh, eventually very active uh, to do follow up with, uh, with each country. Uh, we would like to, to remediate this. Uh, so our proposal is to review the terms of reference for the position of chair and vice chairs to, to give them more information and, and power in the region, and also to have common TORs for these positions across all resonance. Uh, again, we have a poll for this. Uh, if you agree, again, uh, we will draft the revised terms of reference for the position, in this case, of the resonance chair and vice chairs and invite and send them to you all for review. Again, we wait to reach majority. Okay, endorse. Thank you very much. Now we get to elections that are not real elections because we have only one candidate for the position, but still we hope that you would welcome them in, uh, in this role. So we start from the position of Eurozoland chair. We have only one candidate for, for this that is a very active member of Glossoland and Eurozoland. That's Professor Maria Romic from Croatia. And now I would give, the, give her the floor to briefly introduce herself. Maria, please. Hello, thank you uh, for this opportunity actually to, uh, to apply for, for this position because uh, I wrote here that I have uh, three, uh, let's say some, uh, I start from the motivation because I already uh, participate in, uh, in the Euro Salon of the very beginning. So I would like, let's say, to moderate and foster this active participation of laboratories within the network, to encourage the interaction between or among laboratory managers that are appointed to the working group and to contribute to the objectives, to reach the, the objectives of the Glossolan or let's say more specifically Eurosolan. Uh, as far as my qualifications are uh, concerned, that I'm a university professor, I got my PhD in soil science, and I have a pretty long uh, experience in uh, environmental chemistry, uh, almost 40 years. And uh, I'm actually a head of the analytical laboratory for soil sediments, water, plant material, which are accredited according to ISO. Uh, in uh, seven, 1705. Uh, and what I expect from these uh, uh, further activities is to maintain an active communication between Eurosolan and Glossolan. And also I'm committed to the technical work team in creation and monitoring uh, of priority activities for laboratories in Eurosolan. So it's briefly uh, what I, uh, what I see and how I see my position here. And just as a member of a, of a team, which is very active and productive so far. So thank you. That's, I would like to be very short, not to take your time anymore. Many thanks, Maya. And I'm sorry for, you know, you were late. So I hope you didn't feel any pressure in terms of time. Uh, many thanks for volunteering to take this uh, position. Um, I hope uh, Eurozolan uh, would welcome you as new chair of Eurozolan. So we'll see. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> please oh. let us know. So I, I can't see the chat anymore, but uh, um, Filippo, is there any remark on this? Mm, no comments so far. Okay, so I would say congratulations. It's a pleasure to have you as new chair of Eurozolan. So now we get to the position of the vice chairs. So thank you. 
starting from Europe. Uh, again, in this case, we have one candidate, Dr. Ogut Khan Turgay from Turkey. So, Khan, I would like to give you the floor to introduce yourself. Thank you, Lucretia. <clears throat> so, um, as you uh, can see from my uh, profile, I spend um, uh, lots of time in out of Turkey after uh, completing my uh, bachelor's and master's study. I start traveling for academic purposes, of course, and spent four years in Japan and Indonesia because my PhD study was about uh, the effect of land use changes on um, soil uh, biological characteristics. So uh, thanks to, to the, this topic, I have such a nice, of, I had very nice opportunities to visit Indonesia and uh, Japan including many different uh, universities and laboratories as well. So I've been in very well-developed conditions and I've been in different labs with poor conditions as well. And then <clears throat> I had some other opportunities to, to do my postdoc uh, in Belgium, Japan again, and United States. Uh, again, they were such amazing um, experience, uh, not on the respect of uh, scientific or professional uh, development of myself, but also notice that every laboratory is like um, a different world and there is a weak communication between you know, different um, national or regional or uh, global, global laboratories. But we definitely, I, be, I do believe that we definitely uh, take a chance uh, to have um, a certain language uh, hugging all laboratories uh, in a certain uh, region, or if it would great, it, it would be great if it is a, a global. So I, I that's why I uh, I would like to uh, support uh, Glossal and their activities. And actually, I've been doing uh, this since uh, 2018. So my laboratory actually is uh, a representative one um, uh, in the level of state universities in Turkey. So we are a partly accredited and we are um, doing our best to improve uh, our communications with other uh, laboratories in Turkey. At the same time, I'm a member of a Turkey Soil Science Society, meaning I have many uh, good connections with uh, different laboratories in Turkey and in uh, neighboring countries as well. That's why I will be happy to, to have this uh, position and support uh, Maria, if I'm given this chance, thank you so much. Sorry, I had problems to unmute myself. Many thanks, Khan. Uh, again, I hope you would welcome uh, Khan as a new vice chair of uh, for Europe. If everybody agrees, I would like to confirm the position. So congratulations to Khan, and we are very happy to have you on board. We are sure you, will, you we will do great all together. Thank you. Last but not least, the proposal for the new vice chair of uh, Eurasia. Also in this case, we have only one candidate, Dr. Elena Shamrikova from the Russian Federation. Elena, I would uh, give you the floor. Okay. Good morning, dear colleagues. Let me introduce myself. My name is Elena. I'm from Russia. In my opinion, there are different reasons why I believe that I could be elected for the role of vice chair of Eurasia. Firstly, I have great combination of my scientific competencies, uh, uh, experiences, and practices. Secondly, I also have experience as a leader. Thirdly, I already have quite a broad experience of collaboration with Glossalam. Under my supervision, my team have become the National Laboratory of Russia. We harmonize Turing methods uh, with both Walky Black and Dry Combustion. Fourthly, language uh, knowledge advantage. Many laboratories in Eurasian countries working according accordance with a Russian school of soil science and use the Russian language in their research activities. And finally, talking about my future plans, I would like to create the Rusalan network 
In addition, I would like to focus on harmonization of methods in laboratories that we are working according to the Russian School of Soil Science. And the last idea I should to mention is that I would like to concentrate on search for transfer functions for other methods and that any support that is need, needed from my side or NSUs will be always provided. Thanks for your attention. Many thanks, Elena. It's great to, to have you now as official vice chair for Eurasia because uh, you have been doing so much for Glossan and also for four countries uh, in your sub region, so in Eurasia. And as you said, uh, like uh, you also translated a lot of material in Russia, and that's very much uh, appreciated. Okay, um, I'm sorry again, we are late. Uh, but I think it was very, it was a very productive meeting. I would like to congratulate to the new chair and vice chairs. And uh, in order to close the meeting, I would like to give the word for the last time to uh, Georgie and Stella for the closing remarks and uh, maybe a, a reflection on their experience. Maybe Georgie, you go first. In general, ladies go first, but okay. <laughs> It's okay. So once again, I would like to say thank you to all members of Eurosolan. And uh, for me, it was really very nice experience uh, to be uh, in a leading position of this very, very nice network with uh, so many uh, high quality like uh, staff and uh, really good professionals and motivated people who really would like to support each other and share their knowledge. So this is uh, really very well uh, seen yeah, during all this um, time and uh, all communication. So many thanks to all of you for uh, establishment really of the network. And now we see that it's really uh, we have permanent, very active members, and it's growing and uh, increasing, and we are able to do more than two years or one year ago. So this growth is really visible, and uh, I think we are all noting this. So many thanks to Spela for her support, permanent support, I uh, feel, because it's uh, maybe not very much work for us normally. The main work was done by GSP team and many thanks to them, especially to Lucrezia and uh, all staff who was always ready to support and uh, push things forward. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, we tried. <laughs> so I myself, I tried to do uh, what uh, I could. <laughs> and I hope that we now have very nice and more experienced uh, chair, I could say this, uh, longer experience and wider, broader experience in the field. And I really, I'm really happy that uh, Maria will uh, continue our work and uh, expand it in a better way. And I will be here to support as much as I can uh, from my side. And also congratulations to Elena, a very nice colleague from Russia and Already we are friends, also these all nice colleagues and also congratulations to Dr. Khan and uh, wish you very successful uh, work and the continuation of Erosolan activities. Thanks a lot to, and congratulations once more. Many thanks, Georgie. Bella, your turn. I would also like to thank to everyone for the support. I'm not sure how much support I gave to Georgie, but when he needed something, I really helped him. Uh, it was great to work in this group because uh, it's really a group of uh, experts who know what they're doing, we all with the same goal. So I'm happy to stay in the group again uh, from now on also. I would also like to help uh, to um, I'm grateful to the GSP, to Lucrezia, to Filippo, to everyone who supported us when we needed some help. And I also congratulate Elena and to Mr. Khan for their new functions. And also to Maria, I know she will be great in this function because she also, she really has a lot of experience in the field and a lot of knowledge. So 
So thank you, everyone. Many thanks, Bella, and again, a big thanks to you and Georgie for your work and commitment to the network over this year. We can still count on you, huh? so don't disappear. <laughs> okay, so this was the closer of uh, the meeting. Many thanks for having been with us. As usual, we will publish everything on the Eurozolan uh, webpage as soon as possible. Maria, I saw that you... You unmuted yourself. You wanted to say something? Yes, I would like just to say thank you to all of you. And I appreciate a lot the, all the uh, activities already done. And I hope that we will continue in the same way and collaborate in, in a proper way. I identified today um, a few of uh, very important um, issues that we have to, uh, to discuss more. But I, uh, I look very much forward to the future of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And please don't forget to send me your ideas for TCP proposals, huh? if you want to apply for projects. OK. Yes. I'm here to help. OK. <laughs> have a very good day. And I hope to see you soon. And see you all at the Glossolan meeting. Yeah? Don't forget to register. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.